to call to order the meeting of the Waterbury Select Board on Monday, April 17th, 2023. First on the agenda is uh, a, the item to approve the agenda. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay. Motion's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the agenda as presented? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The agenda is approved. Item number two, uh, the consent agenda items, of which there are many, uh, but uh, the reason for this is to move the uh, process forward. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve consent agenda items. Second. <coughs> All right. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the consent agenda items, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The consent agenda is approved. Okay, we are now at the point where we are asked the public to address any items that are not on the uh, agenda. Does anyone have anything? And I would ask that you keep your comments uh, to three minutes or less. Anyone up on Zoom? No? All right. We are now on to the third item, or maybe fourth. Um, Consider and receive public comment on a one-year extension of the interim bylaws of the downtown zoning district. Do I have a motion? Do we need motion from the public? Uh, you should ask if there's any public comment on this agenda item. Okay. There is technically a public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone in the public want to comment on the uh, one-year extension of the interim bylaws of the downtown zoning district? Chris? Is that just because they're not completed yet, so they're looking to extend it out to... That's my understanding, right. that uh, they're, uh, they're looking to get, get them completed by the end of this year, uh, but that hasn't been done yet, and so uh, we need to... Uh, they're allowed to have one more year of extension, and that's what's been requested. Okay, thanks. I'm not hearing any uh, comment. So, um, doesn't the, uh, the zoning board have to uh, afford them the uh, additional year? Um, or does that happen automatically? Happens automatically. Oh. Excellent. Okay. Uh, we will consider the interim bylaws of the downtown zoning district extended for another year. Okay, appointment of the boards. The first is the Development Review Board. Uh, we have three candidates for three three year seats. The candidates are David Frothingham. Bud Wilson and David Rogers. Yes. I move to appoint David Frothingham, Bud Wilson, and David Rogers to three three-year seats on the Waterbury Development Review Board. All right. Do we hear a second? Sorry. All right. It's moved uh, by Alyssa and seconded by Kane. Any further discussion? Thank them all for their service. It is a, long, a board that often has meetings even longer than ours. Um, so I appreciate their willingness to continue to volunteer. And Dave has served as chair for many years. And I believe <coughs> sorry, Dave Frothingham um, and Dave Rogers as a vice chair. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of appointing uh, the three candidates for an additional three-year term, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The three candidates have been approved for an additional three-year tenure. Recreation Committee. We have two three-year seats. We have one one-year uh, one 
extension or unexpired. Unexpired. So it's unexpired a seat, seat that's vacant, but yeah, it seat that's vacant. Next, mm -hmm. next year. And one that's a two-year. Um, and uh, so our candidates are uh, a uh, proposed reappointment of Frank Spaulding, who has been serving as chair, and then uh, appointments of uh, candidates uh, who have been um, uh, voiced their willingness and uh, interest in serving. Scott Culver, Beth Gilpin, Stacy Lambert, Beth McDougall, and Jake Ferreira, oh, and uh, Jonathan Smith. Okay. So, um, based upon that, mm -hmm. there appears to be many more candidates than there are slots. Or I assume we would look at other can candidates to be alternates if, if they so wish. <coughs> yeah. I think so. Um, shall we call the candidates uh, in order? Um, Frank Spaulding is he here? Frank's not here, no. No. Frank uh, has been serving, as uh, I mentioned, uh, as chair for several years. Roger, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, did Frank, sorry, I'm looking at yours. Um, I'm looking at matching the, the three year, one year, two year with the folks who um, put their name in for consideration. So it wasn't defined that way, Danny. Everyone just put their name in for consideration. It wasn't until Friday that I let them all know that there was unappointed seats. Right. Um, and I just let them know that that would be a topic. Okay. No one specifically responded. I want the two year, I want okay. the one year. Stacy uh, Lambert, who's on Zoom, did let me know that there was an alternative committee she would consider. Okay. Um, Frank, I did not ask a letter for. It was my understanding that if they were already on the board, it was a rather routine thing to just reappoint them to the board. And can you tell me which term he was, or which seat he was filling? Three year? Frank? Yeah. Oh, three year. Yeah. They're all three year. They're always a three year. These unexpired ones are oh, sorry. people Thank you. who have come <laughs> on the board. So okay. they've resigned in the middle of the I board. got it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, one thing we could do would be to ask if uh, the candidates would be uh, willing to consider a, uh, the uh, one or two year slot, uh, or maybe they would prefer it. Um, so uh, I'll just uh, call the people in order, uh, and uh, then uh, if you're here, I'd ask you to come up and uh, give us a brief uh, summary of uh, your interest in serving. Um, so, uh, Frank's not here. Uh, Scott Culver? I don't see Scott here. Scott's not here. Okay. Uh, Beth Gilpin? Beth Gilpin, first. <laughs> so, Beth did send a, a detailed letter. I think everybody has a copy of that. Mm hmm. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. I'm open to any of the terms if that's one of the questions. Okay, yeah. awesome. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> you have a preference? I don't think so. Okay. And can you briefly, thank you for submitting uh, your uh, letter uh, and uh, uh, letting us know what your qualifications uh, might be and your background. Uh, but why don't you just tell us uh, why you're particularly interested in serving on the record? Committee. Um, I'm looking to uh, make kind of a more regular commitment to a committee in town. I've tended to volunteer here and there and helped with Winterfest and other activities, help interview candidates for recreation director a handful of years ago. I forgot to put that in the letter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my education was in recreation management. Right. It's always been close to my heart. Uh, I'm excited about what I have seen and I'm seeing happen with uh, recreation in Waterbury. Um, and I'd, I'd love to be part of the effort to think strategically uh, about our resources and about people's needs, um, all ages. 
and with a really broad, what seems to be a broadening definition of recreation, as I hear about some of the programs under development. So I think that's it. I'd love to, to join and be a part of the committee to help shepherd that collaboratively. Great, thanks. Any other questions for Beth right now? All right, Beth, thank you. <laughs> All right, next up we have Stacy Lambert. Hi, nice to see everyone. So I had uh, expressed in my email on Friday that I would be interested in the one year unexpired um, or any of the terms, but I'm fine with the one year um, to try that out and see where my skills would best uh, fit. Um, I also gave the alternative of I could be equally interested in the Conservation Commission as well. So I have leadership experience. I've been a chair of a board. I'm a vice president at a college. Um, I've been coming to Vermont for 30 years. And I, three years ago, um, moved to Vermont and was living in Stowe for two years. And I just bought a house in Waterbury Center. Um, and I love Vermont and I'm passionate about um, wanting to keep it in, in a place that is special and unique and all the ha hallmark factors that come in in terms of the geography, um, the sense of community. I'm a clinical psychologist by training. And so uh, I mentioned in my letter, one of the things that I think is really important for folks' well-being is building a sense of community. And I really like what uh, my colleague that went before me uh, shared about for all really looking at a needs assessment of um, the ages, the demographics of Waterbury and Waterbury Center uh, and trying to plan accordingly. Um, but and I'm very fun. I like all things Vermont. I I I it was uh, put for some levity in my letter that I like the um, Vermont 251 Club, and so I think I'd be for the recreation committee certainly be part of, or now more aptly the 251 plus one. Um, but I'd be interested in contributing to event planning, things of that nature, and the conservation committee. Just keeping Vermont special, and it's so different and unique than other places coming from having lived in my career of working at other colleges. It's the one place I think is really um, just so unique and special wanting to contribute to keeping it that way. Great. And would you have a preference uh, between uh, recreation and conservation? Uh, you know what? I, I think they both appeal to me in different ways. I was trying to be respectful of my colleagues because it feels like there were more folks that were interested in the recreation than conservation, and I could be equally happy and well suited uh, skill set for both. So, wherever I could serve best. Which, which college do you serve at? It was kind of vague. Oh, yeah, William James College. It's William James College. It is in Massachusetts. And it is a where we've been remote since the, which is what allowed me to live in Vermont for the last three years. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Any other questions for Stacy? Stacy, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Beth McDougall. Bell, and Bell. sorry. One question, Roger, if it's okay. I believe Bell and Jake presented kind of a joint application, so I'm just wondering if we want to hear from them together. I know that's not, as I'm aware, currently written into the bylaws, but I'd love to hear the two of you share it together if we think that makes sense. They're amenable. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're really we'll presented. We'll do it either way, but we came up with this idea, not knowing how many people would apply, but. Here we are. Um, I'll talk first. Or you can talk first. Go for it. Okay. Um, I'm Belle McDougall. I've lived in Waterbury for the last 30 years or so, Waterbury Center. Um, and um, uh, I, I don't really have any experience, per se, in recreation um, other than raising money and doing small projects around town. Um, when, when our son was at Thatcher Brook, I got involved in the natural playground and um, got and worked on that project and raised some money for that. Um, and then uh, in 2011, worked on a, the small skate park at Hope Davy, uh, which we need to uh, probably replace. Um, and um, 
many of you probably know that I've been involved in the skate park coalition um, that's trying to bring a new um, concrete skate park. And that's how I met Jake, um, who works for SE Group, so he can tell you about his experience. Um, yeah, I would love to work with all these people who are very interesting. Um, uh, I would just like to get a little bit more involved as a volunteer and um, contribute in that way. And I think, um, I, I feel like Waterbury is a really <coughs> special place. And, you know, last week at the meeting um, with the conservation planning and visioning, I got really interested in really thinking about, wow, how do I really like to spend time with my friends? And there are a lot of options here. and. Um, I'd really like to understand um, the recreation budget, I guess, and where we decide to spend money, um, things, how they're publicly funded or privately funded, and I'd also like to shepherd and help make decisions about how we allocate those, um, you know, um, rare green spaces that we have left. and. Um, I'd love to grow the budget a little bit in the in the recreation department too. I I, I don't know how we do that. I know I envision um, trying to pull together a, a grant um, potentially for the land and water conservation fund. Um, that's you know may another cycle may be announced. Um, thinking about the development needs at Hope Davy and um, the Ice Center. So, yeah, I just have a lot of things going around in my head about it, and I thought, well, I'll step up and, you know, get involved. Well, I think Belle has been really instrumental from the Skate Park Coalition's point of view in pushing forward our efforts on the VORAC grant. And I think the last time around, if there had been better synergy with the community, that we would have had a much stronger case. And, yeah. We weren't quite ready, we realized. Yeah. But I didn't feel like we were collaborative in that effort. Yeah, and so I think that's a big reason why we're interested in taking part on the rec committee. And we are both on the skate park committee, but I think we have a really holistic vision of what we want to see as recreation amenities in our, our town. I think especially at the ice center area where the skate park could potentially be, you know, the vision that SE group has brought forward of this more holistic approach, I think is something that we and Bell were really instrumental in bringing together all the stakeholders of that area and trying to push, you know, what those stakeholders wanted to see in these parks. And I think we can bring that same energy and interest to the rec committee and taking that to the whole townwide aspect. And, you know, in my background, I am a landscape architect with SE group. I'm not technically involved with the work they're doing in Waterbury right now, because I am on the Skate Park Coalition, so it's a little too close to home, I think. But I am working on plenty of other recreation projects throughout the state and country and have a good vision and idea of what can be done. And I think Waterbury has a really unique opportunity of pulling on the recreation economy that it really already has and just creating something that's really great and creating a beautiful, walkable recreation community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we talked about um, potentially sharing a position. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps we would fit into the, the two-year or three-year spot um, and I could be or Jake could be the primary if there's a shortage of spaces and one of us could be an alternate, however it works best. I think we both are just busy people and we both are interested but it's hard to for be hard for me to commit and hard for Bella to commit full time. So I think that was our, our hope and sharing position. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to choose, so which we're going to have to choose at some point here, um, who would you uh, nominate as being the, the lead and who would be the alternate uh, between the two of you? I think we've decided that <laughs> Bella would, Bell would probably be the lead and mm -hmm. I'd be the alternate, but I think we kind of see that one. One vote, but shared shared thinking. Okay. And you said a two or three year slot is what you'd be looking for? Sure. All right. Yeah. Any other questions for Bill or Jake? No. Nope. All right. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
didn't appear here tonight. Yeah. He can reassess after you and thank everyone who applied. And then we could do Stacy as a separate motion for conservation, if that makes sense. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Just and do you want me to restate that? That was thinking out no. loud. No. No. You don't need to send me your notes. Mine's are scribbled. I, don't know. Uh, I, I think I've got it. Uh, <laughs> you okay, Karen? I think so. I am uh, Beth Gilpin for the open three year term. Yep. Belle and Jake uh, sharing a two year term, which I assume will require you to name. Someone. Yeah, we'll say yeah. Belle. Yeah. Parentheses, Bell. Jake. <laughs> right. And um, Jonathan Smith to the unexpected. Okay. Do I hear a second on that? Second. <coughs> All right. Mike has seconded it. Any further discussion? Yeah, I guess I'm, I just want, it sounds like what we're saying is that Bell would be the primary, Jake being an alternate. Of course, it's public meeting so he can attend, but sitting at the table in the conversation, are there two bodies at the table if they're both there? Or somebody's in the audience as a member of the public but would sit in the seat if it were, if, if Bell couldn't attend? Jake would sit. I could speak to that because I know when we were on the, um, the DRB, we used alternates very readily. And what the way we used alternates were all but members, but when it came to voting, is the primary was the voting person. And then if, for instance, the actual member was not there, the alternate would come in as a, a, you know, as a full candidate. So you want to fully engage them. Not, you know, some some places will have alternates that kind of, you know, that they did not engage as, as full representatives. And that way you can. And, and just to be clear, if you appoint him as an alternate, he's an alternate to the committee. He's not an alternate to her specifically. Oh, right. Understood. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's what I would also recommend kind of maybe an amendment to that, Scott Culver as well being an alternate, because I know he's been very active in Little League and stuff like that, and I think he would he would make an excellent alternate. So I, the more bodies are always kind of a good thing, but uh, Stacy kind of helped us out because thank you much, thank you much, Stacy, because we do need members on the Conservation Commission. And that would be really My pleasure. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, what Mike is proposing would be uh, a, an amendment to Friendly the amendment, taken. <laughs> it's accepted. Two alternates. All right. All right, uh, we have a motion that's been moved, amended, and seconded. Uh, mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the slate is approved. Thank you all, and congratulations. <laughs> Moving on to the tree committee. Congratulations, all. We have a uh, one slot open for a three-year seat, and two candidates, Marge uh, Gulias and Zinn Wolf. Uh, Marge, are uh, you here? She's on the Okay. Marge, you're muted. <laughs> I am. <here. laughs> I'm not muted anymore. Go ahead. Just interested uh, in your interest in serving on the tree committee. I am interested in serving on the tree committee. Um, I know this is going to sound like a, a cliche, <laughs> but I have been interested in trees for um, my entire life. My father was a forester in Maine, and my two brothers are foresters in Maine. And I have spent a lot of time, um, you know, with trees in the woods um, and appreciate a lot how much trees have to offer the, for humans and wildlife and ecology and, and actually the world. I, I've been um, in Waterbury for 27 years. I'm on the Rotary. I'm in the Rotary Club. I'm on the... Um, Friends of the Waterbury Public Library. I belong to the Garden Club and belong to another garden group that takes care of the gardens behind the public library. Several years ago, I attended um, a session called Soul, which was stewardship of the urban landscape 
that was something that was done by, at that particular time, I think it was Vermont Community Forestry, uh, probably a precursor to um, Forest Parks and Recreation, with the idea that once I completed that, I would join a tree committee or get involved in some way with trees. At that particular point, I did not have enough time and did not want to commit to that, knowing that I would not be able to fulfill that commitment. Last month, I was in a Waterbury garden meeting with another woman in the meeting who also belongs to the tree committee. And we talked about trees as opposed to most of the other garden club members talking about annuals and perennials and what they're going to do with their gardens. And she told me that there was an opening on the tree committee and asked me if I would be interested. And I said, yes, I would. And she and Steve Lotspeech invited me to the tree committee meeting in March, which I attended, and am very interested in being on the tree committee. I've also taken the Master Gardener course, and last year completed a course called Forced Pest First Detectors, and am taking an upgrade on that this year, which was designed specifically for conservation committees, tree committees, and, and anybody else that was interested in it. I want to keep updated on that, um, not only as a potential candidate for the tree committee, but because of the land that I own in Waterbury, two of the major pests that are invasive for trees are the woolly adelgid for hemlocks and the emerald ash borer and Many of the trees on our property in Waterbury are hemlocks and ashes. So I'm very interested in keeping updated on that. Um, and would bear, be very interested in being able to participate on a community-wide basis on the tree committee. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for March? Mike. Hi, Marge. Um, I, do, Hi. I do have a question. I know you probably, have, you know, from what you talked about, that you have a good background in forestry and tree kind of things. But sometimes the tree warden gets in, gets involved in maybe adversarial such situations. You have a tree leaning over onto a roadside that may need to be taken out. How? Are you, do you feel you're able to uh, intervene in those adversarial maybe relationships and try to mitigate you know, a landowner's concern that his tree may have to come down? Well, I'm not really sure if that's something that the entire tree committee would get involved with. My understanding is that Mike Lociavo is the new tree warden and has been appointed the tree warden. Um, and I know there was something that came out today that there were um, a couple of trees that were down on Main Street. And the suggestion was to get um, Woody or somebody else involved from the town, as opposed to even the tree warden. So I think, you know, as part of the committee, um, I would certainly be willing to participate in that type of a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Great. You're Any welcome. Any other questions for March? All right, March, thank you. Our other candidate is Zinn Wolf. Is Zinn available? Yep, come on up. How's it going? Good. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, all right, would you please let us know why you're interested in Yeah, so you can yeah. Um, my name is Zinn Wolf I'm from Waterbury Center. Um, first of all, I'm looking to get more involved with the community. Um, and uh, in the town um, and uh, my mom sent me a link for the tree community I was like oh great <laughs> perfect I love trees I love spending time outside um, I've had five years experience as a hazardous tree removal specialist um, and I've had the opportunity to deal head-on with municipal projects with um, emerald ash borer uh, removing ash trees in uh, anticipation for emerald ash borer as well as infected trees um, and as well as a lot of experience planting trees, tree health care, um, pruning trees. Um, 
and learned a lot of those skills under Vermont Arborist and uh, had the pleasure of working for myself for the past few months as well. Um, and uh, currently studying for my Arborist certification officially. Um, and, you know, again, just want to get more involved in town. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Zen, I was just wondering, uh, since we do have openings on the Conservation Commission, would you consider serving on that commission uh, if you're not able to uh, serve as a, uh, on the Tree Committee? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Okay. Took the words out of my mouth. Well, I know you're under duress. Yeah, sure. uh, <laughs> uh, any other questions for Zen? Thanks for coming forward. We appreciate your, your uh, candidacy. All right, we've heard from both the candidates. Uh, do we have any motions from the board? I recommend to appoint Marge Gulas as a representative on the tree committee and uh, having um, Zinn being considered for appointment to the conservation committee. If he's, if he's, it sounds like he's willing to do that. So he was. Uh, all right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, uh, motion moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I just wanted to thank both of you, Marge and Zinn, for stepping forward. Uh, you know, getting people to step forward and serve in these committees is not easy. Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, it's a reflection of the how what a wonderful town we have, that we do have such a good active support on uh, the committee. Unfortunately, we only have one spot to fill, and uh, we have a motion for March to serve in that capacity. So uh, we appreciate you for both of that. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of March serving in three years on the tree committee, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations, March. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that must be <laughs> Okay. Uh, moving on to the Planning Commission. We have one seat open uh, for three years. Um, and we have uh, one, two, three, four, five candidates. Just five. <laughs> Just five. Just five. Just five. Just five. Um, so um, they are Amy Marshall Carney, Billy Victor, Robert Adler, Monica Callum, and Douglas Greeson. So we'll ask for them to step forward uh, in order. And uh, Amy Marshall Carney. Hi there. So thank you for the opportunity. So first, I, I presume you've read my bio. Do you have any questions for me to get started? Uh, well, if you could just again restate the, your primary interest in serving on the uh, sure. planning commission, okay, that would sure. be helpful. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, as I said, you know, long time Vermonter, really appreciate living here. Had a professional world that was pretty full steam for a while, had some children. They're all um, getting to the place where they're a little more independent. And I have the opportunity to give back. So, I belong to a lot of groups in the area, support a lot of groups in the area, but now. I really want to be able to be present in some of this work. Um, so as I look through the different openings, the different um, pieces of governance that's within the town, the planning seemed to line up with my strengths pretty strongly. So um, particularly what I do day to day. I did have some questions, though, if that's allowed. Sure. All right. Um, so I didn't have a clear understanding, though, like what would be the priorities for the planning commission for the next three years for this position mm -hmm. to fill? Is um, that part of the work that the committee would need to do, and is that the agenda, Donna? Yeah. Well, uh, I think one of the primary things is uh, the passage of the new zoning bylaws, uh, mm -hmm. which have been they've been working on for two years. So we just extended it, uh, but we were. Uh, I think uh, pretty interested in getting those bylaws uh, completed and 
out uh, to the public uh, over the course of this next year and, uh, and position to be finalized uh, by the end of this year. Others? Great. Do you have more? Yeah. And I would just say more generally, so the planning commission, like we as a select board to some extent, the planning commission considers the long-term growth and development of Waterbury and comes up with recommendations that then come to us as a select board ultimately to adopt, but I just want to respect that it's a volunteer board that's done a really great job thinking about that. And again, as Roger spoke to, that policy is kind of the next thing most likely to be adopted, but like these interim regulations we adopted earlier today were something that went to the planning commission for consideration and vetting before they ultimately came to the select board. Um, and they did receive a grant um, to help with outreach specifically around a certain portion of the bylaws focused on the downtown. Awesome. Um, so they're working on that. But I would say in general, like I would defer to them um, in terms of like that, their meetings and their expertise. Absolutely. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, oh. sorry. <laughs> Have you been able to attend um, any planning commission meetings in the past? I was able to watch, no, excuse me, I did not, I'm sorry, that's the DRB, not the oh, DRB. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the DRB a couple times. Oh, huh. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Recently. Um, yeah. I did read through the bylaws and the drafts, huh. so I have it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, it sounds like, when I read, I saw, you know, how much that you're doing, but it sounds like what you're, the message you're saying is that you have now more increased capacity to be able to attend. And, um, yes. Excellent. Yeah, my uh, formal, my, let's call it paid work, <laughs> is around 20 hours a week, so it's pretty manageable. Um, yeah, and then I do have some side work, but it is manageable. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was going to ask, if we end up not choosing you for planning, would you consider a seat on conservation? <laughs> 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 Just expect it's going to be asked. <laughs> no, of course, yes. Yes, absolutely I would. Yes, because again, the skills I think I can bring and the qualifications the background, they're all pretty transferable. Um, you know, I just recognize that the role the Planning Commission has in relation to the conservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just curious on your resume, sure. uh, where it says administered all state of Tennessee and Vermont learning grants for Green Mountain Buffy Roasters and Kerry Green Mountain. Is, yeah. is Kerry in part in Tennessee? They were, yeah. I'm not sure of their current position. I left in 2017. Okay. That yeah. is kind of, that's kind of through. It was, so. that was a process, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw some gaps between the states. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Very, very different states. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Any other questions for Amy? No, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, Billy Victor. Evening, everybody. The uh, we got Rich is looking for the develop uh, for the planning commission. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pretend some of you don't know my background, so we'll start there, uh, and I will answer the question. <laughs> uh, so I would stay on the commission if you. Want. <laughs> I feel I feel a little weird just being here, so I'll just leave it at that. So for the four years that I've lived here full time, um, I've been on the Winterfest leadership team and co-led um, Wanderlust, and I've been honorary sign man for the last three years. So those little signs that go up and down, that's mostly me. Uh, I've been on the Conservation Commission. Um, I participated when we lived here part-time, but I participated and joined full-time in April of 2019, and last year I became chair of the commission. We've done some good stuff. I, I definitely think we've done, and we lack capacity, as you mm -hmm. probably know. Uh, before moving here, I was an attorney and I have a PhD in economics. Um, my practice was basically doing mergers and acquisitions, so I have a keen sense of economics and business, and I obviously drafting. We draft documents all the time. So one of the things I thought that I could contribute to the Planning Commission would be kind of that legal and economics, the legal skills, the drafting, the process, and that as well as, you know, when there are those tough trade-offs, uh, a balance between how you're willing to take people's property interest and take care of those and try to figure out how to balance the pros and cons and the economic incentives. Um, and I just, I feel like I would bring a complementary skill, not a, you know, I'm not a planner. But, uh, I think that's, I'll give my letter if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Billy? 
or am I going side there? Sorry, uh, <laughs> I don't I'm going go with you first. Oh, I'm no, sorry. I would. I, I was just saying, just pointing at. <laughs> it's one time in the evening. Hi, Billy. <laughs> so, I know so, Billy all too well. Um, you obviously, as you just said, have really significant legal expertise. Our planning commission is a volunteer board with folks with some planning background, no planning background, some legal background, no legal background, um, some staff capacity from a planning perspective, but not necessarily a legal perspective. How would you kind of see like? levels of capacity in a small municipality and legal expertise interacting? Well, I, look, I, I think if you focus on the bylaws, it's really about drafting clear um, guidelines, drafting language so that we reflect the language actually does what we want it to do. And honestly, sometimes we don't want to be clear. Sometimes you use vague terms like reasonableness and things. So it's not really practicing law, and it's not a level of sophistication. It's just bringing that kind of precision and clarity to the work that you do, and also a sense of, you know, the client wants to get something done. You better get it done. Mm -hmm. So that's so, Mayor. Sure. That's your last point was something that I think we all know the planning commission is, you know, really needing and wanting to take action and make things, make sure things get done this year. So um, as much as it has to be detail oriented, it also needs to really be action focused. So I'm curious if that's something you feel, you know, you would bring to the process. Yeah, so I guess I have my thoughts on how to do it. I mean, when, when the Conservation Commission put its comments in, on creating an overlay district or a modification to an overlay district, we were looking at a brand new, completely rewritten set of uh, bylaws. Now they've been completely rewritten. And I think if we just keep rewriting and rewriting and getting into the interstices, I think we go nowhere. I think if I had my way, we would pull back and say, what problems are we trying to solve? What is it in that is the town facing? And how do we solve that by changing the language of the existing bylaws? Get some focus um, in terms of the town priorities. We can worry about the details of you know, heights and densities maybe in the background, but I think the idea is prioritized based on where we want the town to go. Any other questions for Billy? All right, thank you, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thank uh, Ravi Adler. Rob Adler. Oh, shoot. We have so many. It's uh, not Rob. So many in the waiting room? No. All right. Uh, we'll come back to him. We'll see that's not here now. Uh, Monica. Monica Callan. Hi, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I would like to be on the Planning Commission. Um, because I'm very interested in what um, what those documents are that uh, that basically define how we grow this town. Um, I've been here for over 50 years in Waterbury. I've seen a lot, <laughs> um, and uh, there's some great stuff that um, that you know, is, is still here, and I'd like to preserve some of that, um, but I'd like to also, I've also spent some time in New York City and other places, and I've seen some, uh, some really great things that I think Waterbury would benefit from. Um, so I wanna be um, at the table to share some of those insights, um, to help the, uh, the, the zoning be, simple and easy to understand and to um, to access and the processes um, to be easy for people to um, to go through and and have those have those wordings exact like um, Bill was saying um, and so I'm, I'm very interested in sort of a holistic um, approach to those zoning um, those zoning rules and uh, a, a fair and holistic um, approach. So um, I'm interested in conservation of what um, of our resources and um, the way of the way of life that we have all come to love in this town. Um, I'm interested in um, 
in equity and in um, and in creative thinking to uh, to make um, Waterbury the place that we all want to be. So um, uh, I think I have. I think I have um, a lot, I mean, you, you see, it's on my resume. Mm -hmm. I've touched base with um, a lot of things throughout my career. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got some policy um, uh, experience, I have, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very interested in um, creating a, a town that everybody can live in, and not just people who come here for a month of the year to visit. I mean, I've, the tourism is great, but um, you know, it's community that I'm interested in. And um, creating, a, creating a, um, a town where community is, the, is what moves our, our community forward. The idea of community and the group community. Thanks. Um, similar question that I think I asked to Amy is, um, while we're looking at you know the crucial forward momentum, I'm curious how your capacity looks, and if you're able to you know be there, be there at each meeting and, and participate fully. I just like you have so much wonderful stuff on the resume, so that's what I was curious to ask from everybody is, is capacity. To, to yeah, there. well, I've, um, to do that, I've, I've, I'm stepping forth to do it because I'm going to make, I'm going to give something up to be here mm -hmm. um, because I feel strongly about it and I, I'm, I feel like I'm in a good place. Um, I, um, so yes, I have the capacity to do that and I have, I have the flexibility to create my own schedule. I'm lucky that way, so I can make that. Same. <laughs> um. I've stepped. I should say I've, I've stepped back from from doing this for quite a time um, because I I was afraid I wouldn't I wouldn't mm. be able to do that and now I'm in a position I can. Two questions for you, Monica. Um, the first is you mentioned uh, you had been to New York City and seen wonderful things and wanted to bring those here. I was wondering what those were. And then the second question was, if we don't pick you, <laughs> observation? Um, I, I, I will be honest with you that I am not going to make room in my life for just conservation. Conservation is something I want to touch on. Sure. Absolutely. I live, in, I, I live right in that corridor, and I love that corridor. Um, so it is definitely something I'm, I'm very um, interested in um, preserving, but I can't. There's going to be a lot of people who can do yeah, what absolutely. I can do there. So I hope that doesn't discount me for oh, no. <laughs> no, I just want to say, no, 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 I don't think I can. Uh, did you get to the first, first question? question. Uh, but the, oh, oh, sorry. The um, yeah, well, you know what? I. I uh, I learned a lot in New York. Um, uh, being on the uh, New York City DCLA gave me some real insights. Um, and one thing that um, I didn't know uh, was in New York until I spent the time there is that community is really what makes your space. Um, not the money, not the, the shiny things, not all those, you know, the things that people, um, you, you see in all the, the tourist magazines or whatever. Um, what really made those neighborhoods special were the people who were there and who were contributing all the time and, um, and loved, their, loved where they lived. And that, you know, I took that for granted here. And in a place like New York City where there's garbage and dog poo on the street all the time. You know, it's, people have, uh, it was it was very interesting to see that. So, and, and all the crime and all the sirens and everything else. Um, so what makes, what makes a place special is the people. Look, I know you pretty well, Monica, but I'm just curious something on, yeah. on your resume. 
sure. when you mentioned you were secretary of the Waterbury Zoning Commission. Were you on the ZBA? Or no, no, no. I, I was just taking the notes. At just the taking the notes. Okay. So I, I saw all the. I don't think was there a DB was there a DBR there? CBA back what? way back then, because things got deliberated. But I, it, it, it may it may have just been personality. Years kind of <laughs> went because the CBA kind of disappeared, and then we went to the Planning Commission okay. and, and the DRB. So I don't know exactly when when, when was days. when was Al Quinnell That's chair. a good question. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Chris, do you remember? That was twenty. That that was. Mm -hmm. That was that, that would have had to be in the um, that would have been in the mid nineties. Well, For those at home, zoning board of adjustment and uh, now the development review board. Right. Okay. But there was a I was just yeah. more curious because yeah. if you were on the zoning board of adjustment, you would have had a lot more in depth stuff on zoning regulations and stuff like that, which the planning commission. You know, no, but I saw how the zoning played out or didn't play out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for Monica? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Monica. And Douglas Greason. Well, the backstory. <laughs> well, I came to Vermont in 1979 as a 25 year old captain hired to run out from Jefferson around Lake Champlain. And fell in love with it. Uh, my wife and I built a schooner called the Homer W. Dixon that ran on Lake huh? Champlain in the 80s that some of you might remember. Yeah. Um, and when we finally were ready to move on, we went into the marine industry, which is where our strengths were, and moved to Seattle and spent 25 years trying to figure out how to get back here. So um, when my career in shipbuilding was at a point where I could wrap it up, um, we moved back. And I've been in Waterbury for four years. And with the large exception of COVID, it's been great. <laughs> the being in the community is great, being back in Vermont is great, and I'm now at a spot where, um, although my wife might not agree, the house is pretty much finished with the link which I'm doing, um, and I'd like to get more involved in the community. And when I saw the, the Planning Commission had an opening and did the rewriting of the zoning regulations was the front and center task, I was excited about that, Melissa. <laughs> No, seriously, um, I spent my whole working career on the receiving end of regulation, having to find ways to comply with regulations that could be unreasonable or hard to understand, but nevertheless, there they were. And the opportunity to be part of assembling the new zoning laws for this town, zoning regulations for this town, that can be easy to understand, which is what I think one of the guidance in the 15 point guidance document is, it needs to be accessible to the average person in Waterbury. And it can reflect the values of our community in, a, in, a, in an accessible way. That would be great. Your question of availability, mm -hmm. um, I have the time. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to spend it um, serving on the board and you know, becoming more a part of the community. Moving to a place um, six months before a pandemic comes in, it's not the easiest way to sort of get to know people and become part of the community. But you know, we were fortunate in our part of those times. It's just now that things have settled a little bit is the time that I would like to get back and do this. All right. Questions for Doug? Have you been able to attend any of the um, planning commission meetings? I, I attended the last meeting when I sort of heard about this um, opening on the board and start thinking maybe this is something I, I could do. Mm -hmm. um, I attended that meeting, mm -hmm. yes. And I also attended a presentation from the, I think it was at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, um, which was a Zoom presentation about two weeks ago describing the roles of the various. Fundamentals of land use planning. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not, not a big part of the meeting. <laughs> And if we're not able to appoint you tonight, uh, would you be interested? <laughs> no, or will, no. No. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you mentioned you were at the mercy of unreasonable regulations, uh, I'd like to know more about that. <laughs> sure. And, and it, some of the regulations were unreasonable. Um, I worked uh, building large 
luxury yachts for um, international business. So we dealt with um, high net worth individuals in a heavily regulated industry where um, the vessels had to meet commercial standards. So there were performance standards, there were specifications of this material, this item, this calculated capability. And much of it was either behind the times or ahead of the times, but very little of it. Well, but some of it was you just comply with it. Some of it was not good, and there was no venue for trying to improve it. The British uh, Red Ensign regulatory system is the sort of gospel in that industry, and it's um, it's antiquated in many ways. And um, the European approach is often different than the American approach in in how you can. Um, have a cooperative process. Like, if, what kind of volunteer activities, when this predates when you were out in Seattle and you were in, in Vermont, you know, running the sloops and stuff like that, what did you do in, in Vermont for volunteer? Uh, let's see. I was part of the a nonprofit was the precursor to the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. Art Cohn yeah, put it Art. together, and I was on that board with Art. Okay. And when um, it looked as though that organization wasn't going to be able to assemble sort of the, the will and the firepower to get a physical museum going, Art moved on from that. Um, I volunteered in small functions around Burlington, you know, the helping if there was a picnic or something doing that. Okay, yeah, but no, not boards or anything like that. No, on the West Coast, I was on the board of an environmental group, the Environmental Coalition of South Seattle, that was trying to combine brownfields and business and environmentalism and trying to find a way to get the business community to view the environmental community as an ally in a business setting, which is, there weren't a lot of groups trying to do that at the time. Um, and we had some success. Um, we did some projects with um, industry participation from industries that hadn't been active before. I uh, was on boards of youth, um, sports activities, and that kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Roger, before you move on, um, Elizabeth joined the meeting, and I don't know if Elizabeth, Robert Adler, I believe, had contacted me and said he might be out of town. So I just wonder if Elizabeth is an alias. <laughs> um, perhaps Robert's using a different. Elizabeth, do you care to tell us? Uh, this is Elizabeth Walton. Ah, Lisa. Oh, oh. Okay. Hi, thank you. <laughs> All right. I, not, not a problem. I wasn't sure if you were talking to me. I'm like, are there more people there? I can't <laughs> see. Yeah, it's Elizabeth Walton. Any interest in the conservation commission? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up next. Oh, the comedy shows. Yes, don't go away. All right, we've heard from four of the five uh, candidates for our planning commission. Does anyone want to step forward with the motion? Just in terms of conversation, I don't want to make a motion as of yet. We have a real conundrum. We have some very, um, I'm pleased to say that we have some very qualified candidates. And we all have one, one vacancy. Right. The question is, you, you know, I'm not sure where I want to go as of this. If someone has a real strong feeling, I would like to hear that. Right. 
didn't find anything about any rules that the select board ever created about alternates. No, I didn't. Well, that's like I've talked to Billy about with a conservation commission where their commission numbers are very high and they have a hard time making quorums. And I talked about, you know, cutting the required seats back and using alternates. Because alternates can be a very effective way. And sometimes you can get some people who can't delegate their whole time, but they, they can do a function or do a project. So I don't, I don't know what number, Alyssa, you would know how many we are on the planning Yeah, board. the planning commission is five. And I guess I would just say from having served on that board in the past, I do have some, I think it functions well with five people given the amount of deliberation that needs to happen. And because until we get to future agenda items about a charter, there is some things around interviewing and other things and a three-person quorum versus, right. you know, I mean, one, I don't know what the actual charter is. I will say the distinction is because we have a development review board, it is not quasi-judicial. So when I got elected to the select board, they let me serve like a meeting on right. both, which wouldn't have been possible if it was in the zoning board of adjustment prior one. Um, I would say as a general statement, I think the planning commission always welcomes public input and involvement. I know several of these folks have been to meetings, um, but I agree it's, we're in a bit of a conundrum. Um, Well, I'll just note that the um, Planning Commission has uh, uh, really needs to, to move forward. And so um, if any of the candidates sort of impressed you as being someone that was willing to uh, help advance that process, uh, maybe that would be a deciding factor. Do you want us to speak on that? Go ahead. Um, Everyone had great, great things to say, um, and everyone had an incredible amount of experience. Uh, but for me, my vote would go Billy because he's served on boards. He's you know conservation, active town participant for many years. That impresses me. Kane, I I agree with you. You know as much as. I don't want to lose him on the Conservation Commission. I think that, but I think Roger's point is very pointed. I don't think any of us have been overly happy about the, a little bit of the languishing of, you know, zoning. And someone with a keen legal mind, you know, as much as I like citizens' participation, and I think that's important, you know, you want to have a mix of citizens' participation. But if we want to move these zoning regulations, what his professional background and his days of, you know, his work days, he's now, and he's now retired, so he probably has time. So I think as much as I like a lot of the pieces of a lot of the other candidates, I, I think, as Roger said, that, that would sway me to have Billy being a good candidate. And plus, I, I know what he has done on the Conservation Commission, and I think he could do a good job. Okay. Any other discussion? If we don't appoint her to the Planning Commission, I think Amy would be a wonderful Conservation Commission member, if she's willing. I think she has a lot to offer. Oh, I agree. I was actually going to say the same thing. <laughs> Um, and I'll just say uh, I wanted to thank all the candidates for stepping forward uh, again. Uh, I really, really appreciate everything you have done and what, everything you're willing to do uh, to advance the town's uh, zoning process. Um, does somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion to uh, appoint Billy <coughs> Victor as uh, three-year seat to the Planning Commission. <coughs> Second. Okay. And a motion that's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? The only thing I will say is that some of our earlier decisions were swayed with folks who were willing to be on the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. and we had even fewer candidates. And uh, part of my gut is to be consistent in that way. Mm -hmm. um, 
knowing that we do have strong candidates in the running as well. Um, so I'm a little bit torn um, to take someone from one really effective position, uh, really effective and present and uh, focused position when we have, I think, qualified uh, candidates to fill the open position. So I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about making that decision for, for our open spots. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? It's a nice problem to have. There's so many qualified candidates. We usually don't have that. Yeah, I would but just I, echo that. It's about, yeah. That's the nice thing. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see a lot of people stepping up just in general, because I know we've had problems having volunteers in general. And we have two, three, three people who said that they would be in, in conservation, so we're replacing one with three. Who, who was the third one? Well, Maybe it's two. No, it's Stacey, 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 and Stacey, yeah, Stacey, 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 no, just as the like maybe poster child for over involved person who commits to too many meetings and does none of them as well as I did if I went to fewer I have a little like I was a planning commission chair and I we sit here and roll our eyes about the five years of the rewrite and I got on the planning commission explicitly saying I'd like to make this faster and I chaired that board and I take full responsibility but like and I sat there and we spent another year and there was mitigating factors and we hired an assistant zoning administrator but I guess I have no doubt of Billy's qualifications. I know him really well. He does a ton for the community, and I understand exactly why you made the motion, so I don't, in some sense, I completely say yes. I just guess I would agree with that. We have other community members coming forward saying they would also be willing to participate, and so I don't want to mitigate Billy's willingness in that way, but I, I think it is losing some potential additional community members who might be willing to, to be involved. Um, so that's my only, you know, reservation, so to speak. Can I interrupt? Sure. Is everyone on Zoom having trouble hearing tonight, or is it just, um, is it just Liz? Stacy, are you also experiencing trouble? Guess so. Oh. So then we don't get trouble. We don't have chat. We just say, yeah, I know, that's, no, I know, I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. So there's another, that's my go-to. Smiley face party. Well, that's loud with there. Uh, we can hear that. It's the speaker. It's the speaker. Oh, my God. I'm not quiet tonight. Um... All right, I, I think we do have a difficult decision to make, but uh, it's one that we do need to move forward uh, to make unless there's further discussion. All right, uh, we have a motion to appoint uh, Billy Victor. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstain. And abstentions? Two abstentions. All right, we have three uh, in favor and two abstentions uh, as a quorum, and uh, Billy has been appointed. Thank you. All right, let's move on to Conservation Commission. Um, <coughs> wanted to just confirm that uh, Stacy uh, has uh, said that she'd be willing to be considered. Stacy, is that still true? Yes, the Okay. I have the option of just like closing the meeting and reopening it. I'm seeing if that correct is my issue. Maybe we should re-enable chat and stuff. We can do that. All right. Uh, while you're doing that, um, maybe we can just continue. Uh, Zinn, uh, are you still willing to be considered? Okay. Awesome. Reference on um, the yeah. Do you want to state anything further about uh, the Conservation Commission? Uh, no? Okay. All right. And Amy, are you willing to be considered? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um, then we have to uh, 
We have two four-year seats available. Um, a year left on a term and two years left on a term. There right. Four. So that's four positions, and we have three candidates. Um, so do I hear a motion? I'd ask yeah. if we can check yeah. in with Amy and Zinn and then potentially Stacy about their preference on um, length of term or the positions. Wow. Um, my first question would be, what is expected? <laughs> is it a long range plan? <laughs> Billy, our chair is here. Do you want to speak to the <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been building for people for two years. So <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs> no, we gave up the people and we gave up another job. Um, yeah, just um, um, it'll be a pass, Karen, Karen Previous, because you already opened this meeting and then closed it. Click Previous at the top. Sorry, Tech Help. No, that's right. I need Tech Help. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> there you got it. Uh, while they're doing that, the, my understanding is that the Conservation Commission uh, conserves and uh, promotes the quality uh, of uh, cultural and natural resources uh, for the uh, town of Waterbury and the benefits that they bring to its residents. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I had that backed up. I was just wondering if there was like a plan expected to be delivered. I haven't. I have not been reading up on the Conservation Committee. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm fine with the longer range plan. It's fine. I can do it. Okay. Can, can I speak to what we've been doing? Would it help? Uh, please do. Sure. That'd be great. I assume I have to yeah, come up. Yeah, please do. Um, Not that easy. So about a, a year ago, we did a strategic planning session because with COVID, we kind of got a, a little bit lost. Would you come around this way so we, they, they can hear us? Yeah. yeah. Right. So we got a little bit of loss between co We came out of a lot of work uh, before I was there protecting the Shootsville Hill Wildlife Corridor. A lot of work on that, a lot of education programs, but we kind of lost a little bit of steam and then COVID hit. So we did a strategic planning session because we were not sure directionally where we wanted to go. We were involved in communicating to the community about invasive species. We were involved in trying to put uh, education, bird walks. Stephen Hagabu did all the, the bird walks. We had a big party and a big little kids program mm -hmm. on nature um, and migration patterns at Joe Beard's farm. So we were working on things like that. Then what we decided to do was sort of uh, do a strategic planning session. The thing we're tasked to do is to do an inventory of community resources, and it's a broad array of resources. Our, uh, historical, recreational, uh, environmental, and things like that. That was why we did the community values method. So our natural next step will be to try to continue doing those things, but to sit down and say, what did we learn from the community method? values mapping, and where is the best bang for the buck of what we could do. And I know, I promised Tom that he wanted us to do an education program at the summer camp uh, this summer, so we'll at least put on one more you know, education program, um, I would hope to. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of big picture items I can think off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. okay. Questions for Billy? <coughs> no? Okay, thank you. Are we back on? I'm email, no, I don't think we are. So, and I have no idea why. So, I'm emailing Stacy to ask her if I can call her. So, if you can. Maybe one at a time. Just a second. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. we could go based upon our willingness to. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe my recommendation would be we have three people, we have two four year seats, we have one two year unexpired. I would just assume ignore the one year unexpired, you know, because that's eventually gonna work itself out, you know. You know, we'll look to have another candidate we'll put a committee, you know, two people into four years. Hello? Yeah, so there's no input. Yeah, there's no input. Okay. Um, is it the cord on the I checked all the Hello, hello. Oh, I checked all the Hello, hello. Oh, bad. Yes. We should have left that there. We should have left that there. So it's meant to be. Yeah. Oh, bad. Yes. Well, so just repeat it. Yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. She heard, but we're going to constantly get that terrible echo that you just heard. Because it's just coming out of here. Why is that? Yeah. So this is it, though? All right. Is that Stacy's thumbs up? No. Is that Stacy's thumbs up? 
Karen, can you this is turn off your volume on your computer? Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So it's meant to be this is working Okay, I think we might. Lisa, can you let me know if you can hear us? Lisa, can you let me know if you can hear us? I don't know why. There's no phone number on Wait, what are we playing in? What? No phone number. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear it now. Okay. I think we're okay. It, it just went out as, as soon as you guys talked to me before it went out. Okay. Don't move. All good. Thanks, all. Okay. All right. And Mike, you were saying? I was just going to say, you know, the one year unexpired, I'd rather have people who were invested. So to put, fill the, we have three people right now. Mm hmm put one into the two-year unexpired and two into the uh, as full seats. I don't know if anyone has preferences. Mm -hmm. So do you think preference? Amy expressed a preference for a longer-term seat? Okay. Zen? Uh, shorter. Shorter. Mm -hmm. shorter. Shorter term? Okay. And Stacy, can you hear me? She's not on. She's not on? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, we can start ahead. with the two that we have. Yep. So I move to appoint Amy to the open four-year seat and Zinn to the unexpired uh, two years still left for the Conservation Commission. I vote we just say Stacy for another four-year. She said she was open to serving on this. Huh? If, if she yeah, that's a friendly amendment. Okay. okay. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, so we have a motion for uh, Amy for the four-year seat, Stacy for the four-year seat, and uh, Zinn for the two-year seat. Yes. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. That uh, it's been thank congratulations you and thank you. No, you. You'll enjoy the controversy. Yeah. Am I? I'm allowed to stay for a at least the transition, right? Have someone raised a question and I've never heard an answer? Whether you're allowed to be on two boards, and I don't want to be long term on two boards, but I really like to make a good transition. When's your term up? Two oh, years. In two years. Two, yeah, I think it's two. So I don't know why you have them. We don't have any. No, we don't have any internal rules to my knowledge about serving on multiple boards. You okay. Can serve yeah. on no issue. All right. We'll make a transition somehow. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Let's move on. Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. We don't have any applicants. Mm -hmm. oh, we also have someone serving until July. So we're okay. See, lot speech is serving until July. So we don't have to worry about that until then? Yes. It's Very nice. years that Stacy is on the meeting. It's questionable if oh, she yeah. can hear us. Well, congratulate her. I couldn't hear you for the longest time, and I, I said, this is the, they're giving me a persistence test. Uh -huh. You passed. passed. How many times were I willing to log out and log back in? Well, I think the, so issue, I passed. the issue was on our side, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. We'll see if you can yeah, go no for problem. another four years. So um, you did you hear the? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> okay. uh, no. We just have uh, appointed you for a four-year position on the planning on the conservation commission. Uh, this is this is what happens when you when you uh, <laughs> do X, Y, and Z. I was going for the one year, but oh, okay. Well, we could have met. Thank you. Hmm. We could change that. Yeah, do we want to okay. go back and change it? I mean, we've got her for four years now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, you don't have to sign it, you know. Yeah. Well, you, you don't feel compelled to leave. Yeah. Uh, 
If you prefer, okay, I'll, 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 that's fine. <laughs> we do require two years notice. That, that's fine. I'll, 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 okay, I'll you're going to serve from here. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm thank sorry you. for the technical. I'll bring you a bottle of wine to the next meeting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amazingly enough, we're only three minutes behind schedule here. Um, and we have update on the charter and next steps. Wait, did you pick a pass over CBRP? Uh, CBRP? Uh, we can skip that because Steve is still the representative until the end of June. Yeah. They have like a I should let you know that I heard from no one about that. Um, I can advertise it again separately. Um, I just put it on the last post that I made. I kind of highlighted it as new. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to just give me that directive, if you want me to put it out there again. Do any of the planning commission. Right. Oh, the right. Law. Yes. Yeah, maybe That's kind of a, an Douglas Friesen or one of the other right. candidates yeah. uh, would be interested in that position. Yeah. So yeah, don't forget him. And, and uh, Robert Adler. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, am I, am I giving a directive to reach out to him specifically? Um, Everyone who wasn't selected on that. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. I just wanted to make sure I understood. <coughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Robert Adler, Monica, and Doug Gleason. Doug and Monica were present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. They should probably get us for me. Right. You know, it's all kinds of things. We don't know what to read. Okay. I will. I can do that. Okay. Um, so update on the charter. Uh, Tom, do you have anything to uh, inform us? Sure. Um, just the highlights of the memo and expanding a couple areas. Mm -hmm. um, so the one of the areas I think the Vermont League of Cities and Towns excels in is some of these procedural issues <laughs> and walking you through them. Um, but the real short version is if this board had a charter they were comfortable with bringing before the voters. It's essentially a two-month process. Uh, the other interesting point is, you may recall, just before our town meeting, the emergency COVID rules were extended. Mm -hmm. so the charter has to be adopted at a at a town meeting. You can call a special town meeting. Under the current rules, my understanding is you could do that via Australian ballot if desired, mm -hmm. which is a new wrinkle that exists right now but doesn't exist forever. The, 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 the emergency COVID rules that were passed was a one-year extension. I, yeah, no, forgive me. It doesn't need legislative approval after the voters pass it? Yes, it does. Okay, <laughs> sorry, that was why I'm, okay, so that's just so, the voter approval. So yeah. essentially, <laughs> legislative approval would take place this time next year, Understood. in theory, if it happens. Um, so to skip to the end, if you did a local option tax as part of it, legislative approval, governor's signature, and then essentially a two-quarter period for the state to enact it. Okay. So best case scenario for that tax could be January of 2025. So it all takes some time to, to put in place. Um, there's over 50 towns with charters. Uh, EFA technically has a charter. Um, and there's not a very clear range of issues. To the extent you can discern a clear range of issues, it boils down, I think, to, uh, unfortunately, but this doesn't shock me, humans that don't always behave at their best. Um, so charters tend to cover issues with elected board members and managers. <laughs> and those are two common themes. A, a recent example I can give is that in Underhill, a gentleman uh, ran and won a select board race and had a pending legal case, an appeal, a DRB appeal with the select board, and refused to recuse himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Underhill passed a charter uh, allowing for a recall of an elected official, and that gentleman was, I think, 96 to 4 percent recalled. Mm -hmm. um, and so, recall is something that some charters can address. Another theme I've seen is that charters address elected officials that, um, for whatever reason, do not or cannot fulfill their duties, or so simply can't make meetings. Um, Karen can, can expound on this. She checked a little bit with the Secretary of State. But some charters have a process where, in essence, it says, if an elected official does not attend X percent of meetings, 
uh, the select board itself can appoint. Um, some charters also have a have a recall process where X percent of the voters can petition to recall an elected official. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are things that are uh, a little unique to some towns. Uh, Stowe, in fact, has those provisions. Uh, don't we have that somewhat informally within town if someone's not attending a bunch of meetings? I, I don't know if I don't know if it's never I think gotten to the point where we have wanted to remove someone, but I know it's been discussed, you know, when people move, you know, missing a, a ton of meetings, you know, what their effectiveness and even has the legal ability to to don't just we we could basically say a, say a lot but can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Well, and that one might be an interesting one to address here because you know, we had a situation where somebody was repeatedly not showing up for, for an elected position, like school board, for example, mm -hmm. um, or a select board. That be another reason to pass the town charter. I'm not sure if it applied to the school board. Maybe not. Could apply to the select board. Could also so apply to the board. It was a town elected official. Keep um, another common one that's talked about, and Alyssa's mentioned this, are appointment powers of the manager. And she's talked about the planning and zoning director. A number of charters also give some check on that power. Um, and the common examples are towns with police chiefs where the manager will recommend a name to the select board who can approve or deny, but also directors of public works are another common one where the manager uh, essentially is the, the unappointed authority, if you will, uh, but the select board has that final say, the manager brings a candidate to them. And there's some mixing and matching there depending on the towns. Um, you know, I think I hit on non-interference clauses, which are in some charters. Um, and then some charters that limit the ability of the manager to hold um, outside elected office, which has also come up, come up and, and been an issue in some mm -hmm. towns um, fairly recently. Like if someone went to become rep a representative in the town at the legislature. Correct. Uh, or if your manager wanted to be a, a mem not a member, but an officer in a political party. So you can't admit party membership, but you can right. to some extent limit the roles. Um, and then one uh, one thing you see in charters that I actually think is very important um, is procedures for adopting ordinances. The way ordinance adoption works now is you simply warn it. If there's an ordinance you want to adopt, you simply warn it at a regular meeting. Um, and if there's three votes in favor of that ordinance, we have to publish it in five places. Um, around town, we've got to put it in Times Argus. But essentially, if there's no appeal after two months, that ordinance becomes law. Some chapters have a process where that two-month warning process is in advance. The voters get their get their say and get to review the ordinance in advance, which I think is just simply an improvement in public process. I think that one's a bit of a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one, and this is where I think things get a little bit difficult, um, and this pertains to the town meeting day conversation about the very future of town meeting. And they're struggling with this, I think, right now in Morristown. Um, so it's a it's an example that's, that's out there. If you switch to Australian ballot for town meeting day and your budget fails, you've then got to go back to the voters a few months into your year. Um, so. Ideally, these two processes about deciding the future of town meeting could go hand in hand because I would say that if we're going to an Australian ballot budget process, we really should change to a July 1 fiscal year. Uh, so we're voting on a budget in advance, and if that fails, we can go back to the voters with time. Um, but in Morristown, they had a pretty substantial tax increase. Um, I forget the thought they had about 20-ish percent. But yeah, the, yeah. The budget failed pretty overwhelmingly, and now they're they're going through that process and figuring it out. But they've, you know, they're three and a half months into the year. They spent a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
Also. In fairness, do we have the ability to change the fiscal year right now without a charter, or is it required that we have a charter in order to change it from calendar year? I don't know the answer to that offhand. I guess I would just say it's something that personally has occurred to me forever, and I know Bill Sheppel was very fond of his budgeting because he had gotten quite good at doing it on our current calendar year fiscal year, but I guess I'm jumping ahead to my thoughts about this, so I can wait, but I think to me it is important to know what items are we need to have a charter to do this differently, and which is us making a policy choice that we could do whether or not we have a charter. Because candidly, I think that has merit whether or not we choose to do a charter, but mm -hmm. that connection would be something I would want to know. Yeah, I'll answer that quickly. I'll find Thank that you. out. Um, and then at the end of the memo, I lay, I lay out the local option tax and how much that could be depending on your choices. It's a change of where it would to cut. Okay, uh, Chris, uh, you might if I put my two cents in on this. Um, it's a, it's all, uh, Tom has several good issues as to why charters may or may not be appropriate. Um, I think in, in our particular case that we should focus on what we're trying to achieve with a charter as far as what benefits that might bring to the town. You spoke of some rarities that have happened in other towns that, you know, the odds of that happening are, seem to be slim. Um, so to adopt a charter for those reasons seems, you know, not prudent. Um, I would rather focus on it almost seems like the local options tax is the driving force between about behind why we're <coughs> interested in the charter. Uh, and if that's the case, what would we gain out of that local options tax? And you know, in the last couple of board meetings, I've heard about some suggestions as to well, we could use the local options tax couple of different times, um, and I think you need to consider Tom's suggestion of how much the local options tax will, will uh, produce, and then how many entities are going to go after that local options tax and how diluted it will get, and whether or not it's going to serve the purpose, you know, or main purposes that you may have thought you were after it for in the first place. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Chris, if I may. Sure. Um, one thing I just want to say that's not a rarity that I think is a good thing to think about is if a board member resigns. Uh, for example, if a board member resigned and there was six months left in their term, it's a different scenario than if a board member resigned and there was 33 months left in their term. So I think at some point it, it's, it's a good exercise to think about at what point does the select board appoint versus call for a special election? Now, if, you're, if, a, if someone with a three-year term resigns a month into it, it's a different situation than if you've got three months left. So I think that's, that's not a rarity. People resign from seats all the time. And the other thing I'd say is some of these issues about human behavior, whether it's select board members or the manager, um, yeah, they're rarities, but the time to address them is when you don't have a problem. And so if you're going to go through the process of having a charter, I think maybe you don't need to have 10 pages on these issues, but hitting some of the basics can give you some reasonable protection going forward. In essence, it's almost a bit of a contract. Well, I guess my fear, and I've said it before, is that adopting a charter, I hope it, I hope we look at it in a broad enough sense so that we, it doesn't become our enemy, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's it. Yeah, and I think um, that we are bringing this up for conversation in public meeting uh, so that uh, it, is does receive uh, due consideration and that uh, we intend to have broader 
debate on it, uh, in particular uh, what the use of this additional revenue would be and where it would be directed because uh, in my conversation with <coughs> Teresa Wood, just as an example, she indicated that uh, it would have a lot better chance of passage in front of the legislature if this funding was directed for particular usage. Uh, and uh, you know, I think I, my sense is that if uh, the uh, our commercial community uh, sees that it's going to do something to benefit uh, house, affordable housing for the people that work for them or uh, benefits the economy of, uh, of Waterbury in some way uh, that, that we'll have a better chance of getting this thing through in a way that uh, the majority of the town approves of. Okay, any further discussion on this point? Mike? I'm still as per your first sentence in your memo this is something I've kind of wanted to know, maybe a, a visual person, and I'm not still getting, I, I want to hear about comparable communities. You know, what communities have, you know, I don't know which communities have charters, which communities don't. I would like to see how they've worked with communities of similar size to Waterbury versus, you know, places like Burlington and Montpelier, just that they're not, you know, we're not looking at the same entities. They're, they're, they're different. But something similar in how, how charters in those communities, I know you mentioned Underhill about firing this individual, but that's probably, as Chris kind of said, it's a little bit of a one-off. But you're right. If you want to act before things become a problem, and the, the challenge in reviewing them, if you look at the, uh, especially the older cities, uh, the charters are really expansive um, and cover uh, okay. cover everything. Uh, in essence, that's covered in state law, usually with, with minor tweaks. Um, and then they've got additional things we don't have, like election districts or wards. Right. Um, when you look at individual towns that are newer charters, they're not comprehensive. So they, they don't try to, you know, supersede every potential area. Try to look at every, every scenario. They're, they're, they're more about, they're more situational. Mm -hmm. They had an issue they had to address. Uh, and EFUD is an example of that. EFUD is right. technically a charter district because it needed to be created. Right. Um, so that's really what the charter did. And so there's a lot of examples uh, you know, the town of St. Albans, for example, which is a little bigger than us, but their charter says local option tax, something about their planning commission appointments, and I think that's basically it. So as you know, it's, it's a half a page kind of charter. Uh, so there's no real com way to compare communities here, unfortunately. Right. There's no sort of template that you start with. So it's not like communities like Harden, St. Albans, Virgins, you know, those are just, you know, I have no idea whether they have charters or, or, or not. And that's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm just curious to hear what communities of similar size to Waterbury, they have, how, how they have functioned with charters as a rule. And there's, there's no... There's just no template. There's just no template. Okay. Um, and we're only talking, you know, 50 or so municipalities statewide that have charters. It's that many. I didn't even think it was that many. When you come in tomorrow to sign orders, remind me and I'll grab the book off the shelf. I think okay. it's a paper copy of all the charters. I was just saying, because they're all in statutes. So yeah. the trick, what yeah. I was doing well, right now was pulling Vermont yeah. statutes. I'm pretty it's... familiar with my old job being through Vermont. And, you know, I know communities pretty well. And it'd be just. But you can take that book home. Just yeah. We get that for free. We're not yeah. sure when they Oh, okay. No, I yes. But I was doing a little right. research for, for Tom the other day. I, I realized that I have one whole book that's just all the charters. You could get them online, too, but there's a book right out in the other room. Title 24 Appendix, Municipal Charter, City of Barrie, City of Burlington, City of Essex Junction, Montpelier, Newport, Rutland, St. Albans, South Burlington, Virgins, Winooski. Sorry, I'm sorry. Virgins does have one. Yeah. Virginia. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Bradford, Brandon, <laughs> Bristol, Bradford, Callis, Bristol. Cavendish, Charlotte, Chester, Colchester, Danville, East Montpelier, Elmore, Enosburg. I will keep in mind some of these could have been repealed. I am just reading heading yeah, right. title. So some of these, like Ephod, like it was going to say Village of Waterbury, and then it's going to say is now Ephod. Right. And I'm guessing, I, uh, I think Elmore just passed the local option tax, so I bet their charter is three just that, yeah. yeah. It's pretty uh, brief for, for, for the taxing authority. All right, uh, I, this has been a great discussion. Um, Can I make two quick points about that? Uh, yeah, you and then King. I was just going to say, I think it's great. I think my one, can, I think just on the timing we have to think, I think to me there's a couple of potentially very contentious and very different issues wrapped up in here. So just, I fully support what you and Chris said about having a use for the local option tax. And to me, that's one big piece of it. Mm -hmm. To me, town meeting is a huge and equally large question. And I have some concerns about those things becoming one political entity together. And you know, fiscal year to me is a little more administrative, so that could be separate. But right. um, just figuring out if we choose to include multiple things, that that's giving folks multiple points to support or oppose something. And if just at what point we have a discussion about what policy priorities are most important in a charter um, and getting public input. And just to me, say like the end of this year, I would love to see it happen, but I think like getting input on that sooner than later to get something mm -hmm. we think would be passable if that's the route we're going. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to reiterate, it's pretty much the same thing I said last meeting. Once we boil it down and we get a charter ready, we deliver it to the voters, they either say yes or no. And it's giving our town an ability to govern itself without having to look to the state for every single thing that we do. Um, so to me, having the charter and looking at all the, all the things that we can potentially do with the charter or potentially not do with the charter, um, it's incredibly important that the people of Waterbury know that this gives them an option to create a new rule book for our town. Uh, I think that's all I got on this issue right now. Before but. we move on, I'm curious then, you know, because it's time sensitive and big, um, can, are there actionable next steps for, for <coughs> discussions and planning among the select board and, and you? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, Mike was interested in comparable towns and charters. Uh, you've been offered the book. Would you be willing to take on the I'll responsibility do the of finding something that's uh, similar? You've been offered the book. Um, <laughs> and uh, Alyssa just sort of identified two different, very different issues. Uh, one is uh, the consideration of a local option tax, and the other is uh, our disposition on the, the town meeting. Um, and I guess my sense is that uh, the motivating factor here is the local option tax more than the town meeting, but I would be willing to take uh, more uh, input on that perhaps at the next meeting before running out of time here. I think Kane's input was very critical. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really important because I think there really has to be an education process because I hate to say it, there are people who just have, have their head in the sand and they don't understand. And I think people need, because this is a big change, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think people need to understand that we have to have some public meetings and stuff like that. And there are still going to be people that are just not engaged. In, but we just got to do our best to in, engage people the best we can. Yeah. I agree. Um, I think that that's part of the boiling it down process uh, that uh, yep. Kane was just mentioning. Okay. Um, so I, I don't think that we're going to take a motion on this uh, at this point, uh, but uh, we have a couple of uh, things to, to, to consider uh, and perhaps we can put on the agenda or to try to develop a little bit more focus on this and identify uh, some additional next steps unless there are other next steps that people want to identify right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Circus Smirkus <laughs> came back to us with a response on the question uh, of uh, safety. 
And I guess the question is whether that satisfies the concerns that were brought before us uh, at our last meeting. Address this before a motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike, it was your concerns last meeting, right? That we needed to get this response from them. Yep. Looks good to me. I move that we approve Circus Marcus's stay in Waterbury for the dates as proposed. I'm not aware it. All right. I'll yeah. second it with the question of what permission are we granting that they didn't have? And I know that's like, but wasn't that part of the jux, right? They, they had a list of questions, a bunch of which didn't apply. I don't get the other book. What they asked it? about like, a noise, do we need police force and EMS? I felt like most of their requests were, it's fine, we've made the motion that we approve it, so we will approve it. Um, my understanding when I left the last meeting was I was charged with reaching out to Gary to get his yes. opinion on their yeah. plans, uh -huh. which I did. Right. Gary, and that's the email I've given mm -hmm. you is Gary's right. approval. Right. right. I'm asking about Circus Marcus's original email to you that said, like, I understand, I but I didn't, I didn't follow up on those two questions because I wasn't, it wasn't oh, yeah, clear no to me. Because they weren't like a right. right. No, it was right. more a question of whether uh, they uh, had met the concerns of our uh, emergency uh, response official. They asked us whether they needed an EMT yeah. on site mm -hmm. and whether they needed something else. I can't even recall as a top of my head what. Um, but I did not look into either of those two questions. <laughs> no, my understanding is that we didn't have any policy that said that they had to have that, so we it was just. Yeah. I don't think if we have a policy, I definitely think it's recommended. Oh, and they have, no, it's an entertainment permit, but you already issued that? No, no. I didn't issue it. Oh, right. that so that's what it is. Yes. This was the question. Well, what, uh, what are we actually, as the select board, issuing to them? Okay. Circus Marcus comes to Waterbury. Permits, we blah, blah, blah. Um, they have emergency details. They've applied for the temp permit. Do they require a Norris permit? No. Do we require a gathering permit? No. But we do have the big top ten youth circus live production C attachments. So at the select board meeting held on tonight, <laughs> our motion is that we approve this event pending having had this information. And I guess I would just love a checklist along with my second so that we are sure we get the people the things they need when they come to us. Sorry. Do you make a motion to approve their I, entertainment? That is exactly, well, Danny's motion, right? I move to approve their entertainment permit. We have everything. Correct. Now I'm second guessing that, but we do. We did. Yes, that's the motion. <laughs> okay. It's approved. Do we have any conditions? But no, I think it's. Do we need to re second? Did you second? Uh, second. Okay, second. Okay. <laughs> so we move and seconded. Any further discussion on circus mm -hmm. marks? It's going to be so much fun. Hearing none, all in so favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The circus Marcus will get its entertainment permit. I One. don't even have that document with me. <laughs> <laughs> it says all it's right. a manager signature, so we okay. might have it is now approved. It's not until August. Um, 100 on 100. Uh, this is a uh, relay road race. Uh, there was some concern expressed about uh, safety conditions and the fact that it's going to be coincide uh, with uh, the um, anti-car show. Um, and uh, they, uh, Karen reached back to them. Uh, they came back with an explanation of uh, how and where they were going to uh, have uh, road not crossers. Even on 100. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, I wouldn't want to run that. It's a relay. You know? It's a relay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not terrible. It's like four bars in there. Yeah, my my wife survived it. Um, so, any uh, what's your disposition on on their uh, application? Any particular motion? It looks like they have all their ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. And so? I move to approve the 100, 100, 100 relays application. Second. 
Okay, a motion has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving uh, the application of 100 on 100, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that's moved and approved. Now we have the presentation of the quarterly financials. I defer to our town manager. I'm going to speak out for a second. Oh, I was okay. going to say, are you going to come back? Or? Okay. 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 If any board members would like some candy with their budgeting presentation, and Karen, and staff, and anyone here. What's your uh, healthy uh, folder budget? They are uh, free from Goodwill. <laughs> uh, it's audience <laughs> members. They don't look there anyway. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt I just wanted to. All right. So what do you got for us? All right. I can go. Um, okay. Oh, 904. We're ahead of time. Let me go from the top. I don't know where these just hit some of the highlights. Um, tax revenue is that number we'll populate over the summer when we send our bills out. Right. Um, but we'll look at that number. Um, so it's not a concern long term. And I included all that interest and penalties, which are pretty predictable each year. Um, one thing, um, I started looking at it, and I'll probably just start moving on it slowly next month. Um, but if we have tax which begins with usually just me mailing a nasty gram to people saying, you behind, give me a call, or an XLMT from the attorney kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'll drive some of the interest and get people to pay. Um, the other, other, uh, excuse me, other governmental revenue, which is about 820 grand, um, that's, that's, that's essentially state funds that are not a guarantee, but I think reasonably a guarantee. We budgeted uh, really conservative numbers there. That's the, that's the pilot revenue is the biggest chunk of that. Um, and if you'll remember my memo from earlier, every time there's a local option tax, that pilot prop grows a little bit. And there's a bunch more than coming online, so that should be good news for us this year and in future years. Um, Service fees, a bunch of things. It's our, our contract with other towns. It's Karen's revenue through her office. We're essentially on pace with last year. Um, and then debt service, it's an odd thing to call it. That's our tax stabilization fund. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's named debt service. I presume at some point 15 years ago, some of that money was used to pay for debt service, and it just was named that. Um, so I just stuck with convention. Um, so those funds are budgeted, and, and that tax stabilization fund is, is sitting on seven figures of money. So I'll move that money at some point. Um, certainly, certainly it'll all be moved by the end of the year, but to some extent, you you watch the market, and as those funds do well, then you, you try to move it at that time. Tom, mm -hmm. what, what might be a more um, descriptive title for this line item than debt service? It's, and it's interest on reserves. Like we, might we retitle it? Yeah, we, we can just call to it. To call it what it is? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just use of a reserve. Um, that's all it is. I'd be in favor of that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I hear none. <clears throat> um, moving down under general fund expenses, so the, the first big number, the payroll and fringe, is essentially everyone in town hall with the exception of Bill Woodruff, who technically is EFUD and then partially built back. So that's that's according, that's on pace with the budget trend, but substantially up from last year, uh, in part because um, Bill Shepelik had essentially some payout, some pay of work he did, but essentially three months of, not quite three months, but almost three months of vacation time in addition to the work he did, and then we had an actual town meeting day, which meant that Karen had to staff the election and we had to pay for some hours there. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're higher than last year, but I'm pleased to hit the budget because a lot of stuff was front loaded. Um, and then on the ARPA, um, just moving down to moving down to that, um, the 150 to EFUD has been sent. 
Um, public safety, uh, the state police actually just billed us for the first quarter about a week ago. Um, so that'll, that'll be reflected in the next update. Um, fire department, the expenses have been pretty minimal uh, so far. They did, they did order their $85,000 scuba package uh, that was in the budget and approved. Um, and a big chunk of their budget is debt service, and that doesn't come until, uh, well, we've paid those, you know, we've paid those bills now, but we process those bills, so that's coming soon. Um, just want to move down, skip over landfill and green up, which is really just one item, health and social service. So that's the, that's the budgeted funds for the animal control slash health officer slash parking. Um, I had one person apply to be an animal control officer and we never lined up. Um, so still trying to figure that out. Um, something I just want to suggest to think about, and this will come up, um, when the SE groups presents the park study, I think, is that um, a theme from that study that's emerging is that um, when you have a when you have Hope Davy and you have the disc golfers and you have the sort of use that it takes there, at some point you may need some level of I don't want to use the word enforcement, that's too strong a word. I'm, I'm struggling with the, with the appropriate word here, but you need some level of maybe oversight in addition mediator. to the volunteers. Not a mediator, but um, you know, the course is closed for mud season now. Um, were the people playing it over the weekend? Yeah, maybe. Um, use the term babysitter on that course sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> enforcement is the definition. It doesn't have to have a negative connotation. You're enforcing yeah. guidelines. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Boonana Recreation, we're actually below trend of last year, but the summer is everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going we're gonna to monitor that, that payroll pretty closely over the summer. Uh, but in general, in general, things look fine there. Um, but everything's going to hit in the next uh, next few months there. And really, that's in the sign-ups, sir. Um, par. <laughs> um, yeah, the sign-ups. Um, the sign-ups are on par with prior years. Uh, we've got about 250 kids signed up for the summer. That's great. For the summer camps. Um, so it's a it's a big number. Um, Parks maintenance is a similar story. All those expenses happen pretty soon, um, and that's a real challenge. In prior years, we've had a, a park, we've had a full-time seasonal person in parks. We've been unable to find someone so far, so that's going to bleed into public works because in prior years we've had one person from our highway crew full-time parks maintenance. That unless we find someone, that's going to be two people, which impacts all their other work. Um, so we'll get to that in the highway, but that's going to be a bit of an issue going forward and probably a separate topic at a future meeting. Um, planning and zoning, um, that should be on par. We're unfortunately going to have some vacancy savings there. I'd hope to have a candidate before you for that position tonight, but not the way it worked out. Tom, um, we can just go back a second. I know you talked about <coughs> recreation. I know Initially, the plan, we kind of had a different position before, and the thought was, well, wait to see when you came on, you know, what that position might wind up being. Have you had any thoughts about that? Yeah, the budget gives us funding for uh, one full-time position, and then later I need to hire a second full-timer, so that would then be an, an increase next year, next year's budget, because we've got to analyze right. all those costs. Um, but it's not like a plant of uh, a recreation director slash, you know, all these enforcement kind of things added on. No, I don't think that model works. I think in rec well, in recreation, Wyatt is working sixty hours a week. Right. Uh, so oh, I know. So we need we need more help in recreation. And I think that's gonna drive some revenue in the future too. Um, adding on those other things, yeah, you know, maybe in a couple of years that could be something someone could accomplish, but it's really a separate issue. And it's going to be a tough nut to crack, quite frankly. 
any hiring. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, so the municipal building, um, that's all debt. So that just gets paid in two payments throughout the year. Um, and then special articles. Um, so the senior center has funding in two places. They get paid monthly. But the special article piece, so the general rule on special articles are that the town doesn't pay them unless they ask or we hit the end of the year, and then they're all paid towards the end of the year. Um, I'm not even sure about the if they ask part. I think they just all get paid at the end of the yeah, year. The end of the yeah. year. If they, some, some ask early, and then they'll get paid a little bit early. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, in general, I'm not super sympathetic if you're... If you want it all on day one, I'm probably going to say, well, how about a quarter of your month or something. They don't invoice you for no, they, they do need to send an invoice. And my <coughs> recollection is there's one institution, and I can't recall who it is, that an exception was made for to pay them ahead of time. But everybody I paid in December. Yeah. Like, what is there, 20-something of them? They and usually, usually they don't ask. Gotta, we've got to ask them to give us. I have to ask for the invoice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Maybe they don't need the funding quite that bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah. So you won't see much of that. What's ever happened with their kind of needs for reconstructing their kitchen and stuff like that? I have not heard from them in a while. Last I heard, they were working on getting close, but I have not heard. But they from still them. haven't done anything formal. I don't want to say they did it on their own. But they haven't requested our funds or any town support. <clears throat> uh, moving on to highway, again, the property, the property taxes come in um, when we bill, and the ARPA funds will get transferred to highway um, when we actually have those capital expenses. Um, and then moving on to highway expenses, um, so we came through the first quarter pretty good. Over time is always front-loaded and then back-loaded. Um, not a lot of overtime in the summer. Um, but the winter wasn't too bad. Um, fuel's up, we budgeted for an increase. Um, salt, um, it felt like it certainly has been a mild winter, but we pretty close to the budget. We've got some salt in the shed, but uh, it must be like a really mild in November, December, we're gonna hit that line uh, for sure. Um, and then the chloride sample. Are we still, uh Buying that in uh, as needed, essentially. Yeah, but we're done for now, so we, that line is is the entire season. Right. Chloride sand and gravel. I will be in front of you. It's uh, maybe not the next meeting, but probably in the next month. Um, so the Bolton pit um, sent us a letter. I don't have the price sheet yet, um, but they're allowing us to buy three thousand nine hundred twenty yards of sand which is our average usage for the last three years. After that, they are closed. Um, so we budgeted to buy 3,000 yards of sand. Um, what I'm probably gonna do is, is sit with Public Works and, and think about reshuffling the deck uh, because we're not gonna get cheaper sand than we get locally. So I'm, we're probably gonna wanna buy our full allotment of sand. Mm -hmm. And then, I've, and then after the owner, that they're closed permanently. After that, they're closed permanently. Now the owner of the pit said, that's all you get, and that's based on your three-year average, and I'm offering that to all the neighboring towns, so it's fair. And I said, okay, but if another town is allotted 3,000 yards of sand and only needs two, can I buy the extra stockpile? It? She said, you're the fairest to ask, ask, ask that question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see if we can go a little bit over, but I'm probably going to come back to you in a month or so and say we're going to we're going to reshuffle the deck a little bit, and move within budget, but stockpile the sand, but 3,000 yards seems to be our, our typical usage. Um, and then once that's gone, we're, we're just trucking it in further, whether we do that ourselves or, or pay someone. Uh, but that'll be a bit of a challenge. Um, vehicle and equipment repairs where trend isn't great. Um, bunch of stuff that added up. I don't think th these are not things that having mechanic would have saved us on. These were more major expenses. Um, new tires, busted a plow, um, issues of that nature. So they're not, it's not the oil changes. We're doing all that stuff in-house, bigger stuff that we went through. Um, and 
then the million dollar, uh, million dollar fifty five thousand transfer to capital fund. We haven't had capital those capital expenses yet, so we'll make them. One of the challenges we're going to have on the capital side that we actually talked about this morning, the ceiling and what it is. We budgeted to buy a uh, mini excavator. We have mm -hmm. one now. We'd have a second. Um, and for some of the, and the thought was we rent it typically for a good portion of the summer and it's just cheaper to buy it. But as it stands, we don't have anyone to run it hmm. since that person to be doing parks maintenance. So we might rent one for a month in the summer as we free people up and get some more work done on our gravel roads since we'll want to be doing some gravel road work and pulling sidewalks. Um, but we might postpone buying it because if there's no one to run it, there's no point in paying 90 grand for a chunk of equipment that sits around. Sits around. Um, so we'll re reshuffle the deck there and that might, um, that might help with the sand issue. Is it just because of hours on what you're doing or just no one, <coughs> you don't have qualified people to do that? No, it's, um, it's the hours. I mean, we use it for the sidewalk projects. Okay. Uh, and then they use it to ditch all summer long. Right. Um, People but with, doing other things. Well, with one person, if, if you think about our crew, if we have seven, um, if two are assigned to parks essentially full time for the summer, right. at least five, um, there's, there's the regular stuff that has to occur. There's the ditching, there's the, the roadside mowing, um, and there's typically one employee that does essentially nothing but truck stone, gravel, sand all summer. So that leaves you with not very many folks left to do some of these other projects that are planned. So that's the challenge. So we're still planning on, on the, the big section of gravel road that we budgeted. That wouldn't happen until later in the season when the park works slows down. And that can happen more in September. Um, but the parks are a bit of a challenge. Is it not cost effective to hire someone to do to do trucking and we we do that too. Okay. And so for parks, what we've talked about is um, we hired a, through the cemetery budget, we hired a contractor to, to mow the cemetery. Um, what do you call it? Everyone, one person bid. Um, and we took the bid at forty-four thousand dollars last year. That cost us twenty grand. But mm -hmm. Hope Cemetery is a huge cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of time trimming and mowing, and so we felt like we didn't have a choice. But in other places, you know, for instance, around here, you know, I think our guidance is well. You know, we don't have the staff to do everything we want to do, and so maybe the nice manicured lawn, maybe the last fifteen feet will be a nice riparian buffer, and we'll let that grow. And, just do a little bit less where we can. Conservation um, commission. So there's, there's, that's just going to be the reality of it, unless we can find someone. But we just haven't had luck finding people. Um, so I'll come back to you in the future with some, some. I don't want to say changes to the capital budget, but realities on the ground and how that's yeah, going to be. Yeah, is just becoming. Mm -hmm. And that just, that just happens every year. Yep. Um, but that million dollar transfer is also the way we can control our total expenses. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, I recall last meeting or the, or the meeting before you talking about how the Bolton Pit also does gravel, correct? It's not just not anymore. Right, right, exactly. Um, are we actively looking for a new gravel pit? <laughs> 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 and I, and I, I flat out asked her if she would, you know, and, and I've heard different things about, I flat out asked her if she had gravel left to sell. And she said no. And if you talk to other people, they say, well, she just wants to retire. And I've flat out <laughs> said that, you know, can I buy it? Mm -hmm. Do an evaluation and think longer term here. Um, the owner wants to not be in the business anymore, and that's that. Um, there's no willing buyer, willing seller. There's a potential site um, next to the Hunger Mountain Trailhead. Uh, there's an old state pit there. Um, <coughs> they are not receptive to any sort of agreement with the town about turning that back into 
I can imagine. Some sort of mace. But there's no Yeah. Sorry. I was just <clears throat> thinking about that while I was trying to go to sleep the other night. I was like, do we have a gravel pit? <laughs> we do have a place to get gravel. We have 20 k budget to look at a place to do it. Yeah, Thanks. good. <clears throat> that was so that's going to just impact those, impact everything going forward. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa and then Priscilla's hand up. Well, if you're on the same topic, go ahead, because I'm on capital stuff. Chris? Yeah. Um, so I had the two McCall boys <clears throat> up looking at the pit I operate out of on, Blush, on uh, Tweet Road as well the other day, and we did go over to that quarry. So you're saying that the state has no interest in opening that? So far. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> did, uh, I'll talk to you on a private note. Um, so I did speak to the McCullough boys quite extensively about the future of <coughs> The local gravel industry, uh, it looks pretty bleak. Um, they're operating out of the South Berry pit right now. They're crushing granite. Yeah, it's a I, heard that. I heard that too. Uh, but their gravel source that they're mixing it with in that pit is very hit and miss. Uh, so they don't know how long that's going to last. Um, <coughs> Hinesburg Sand and Gravel is another location. It's, you know, to get there and back is a pretty lengthy trek. Um, plus, they're not cheap. And uh, so, with all the years that the Bolton Pit serviced the eight local towns around it, <coughs> and then all the construction industry, all that now gets forced somewhere else to other other pits and quarries that you know, have been used extensively for years and now will be depleted even sooner. Um, maybe it's worth getting our representatives involved. Somebody needs to start putting pressure on our state legislative body to start opening their eyes to a huge problem that is going to impact not just our town, but a lot of towns locally uh, in, a, in a way that is, you know, unreasonable. Um, and they need to, you know, they need to open their eyes to that. Um, I had spoke to the McCullough boys about crushing some of the stuff I have. At some point, if any of the select board members want to go up and see the gravel pit that I operate out of on Sweet Road, mm -hmm. um, I'm limited to the amount of extraction I can take out of there. Uh, I was just up there today starting in on cutting overburden back and starting to stockpile for my summer use. Um, Are so you the only one uh, pulling the only material one out of there? Operates out of that pit. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we're a co-applicant. Um, and, you know, it's been a great resource for myself over the years, but living here in the town, I don't want to incur a ton of costs tax-wise. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something I can do. I don't know. But so, so, so anything you need to walk that walk real delicately. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are crushing granite and Granville for this purpose right now too. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is McCullough's simply said, you know, our our resources running out too. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a matter of time. They should start pulling that scrap off the side of their hills and crush them. Well, that's what they're doing. Oh, are they? Yeah. So they're subsidizing, they're cutting the gravel they have in their own pit with stuff they're getting from the granite quarry. Mm -hmm. But they said to me the other day, we don't know how long that's going to last either. So, yeah. Well, listen. I was going to pull us back into the dry land of budget review and just Ooh. ask as a technicality, did capital funds have to be spent in capital? Or can we allocate whatever we see fit? I'm just thinking about the mini expert. You know, would you try and stop that like for like or just throw it somewhere else? So I think it, the answer is it depends, unfortunately. And that's fine. And I don't need to, I'm just curious. It, we're not restricted. I was wondering if there was like a, you know, obviously, certain if you vote it for a bond, it has to go we're for not, the bond, but. We're certainly not restricted from overspending a budget line. So if we need to spend more on SAMs, for example, we can yeah. do that. I guess my question, I'm sorry, I didn't, 
in my head, I backtracked to our previous conversation about the mini excavator. I was just asking if you're not purchasing it this year, are you likely to still allocate that to a capital expense, or would you? So, it, or it, that also depends. <laughs> so then I was actually going to raise the issue when I got to the library. So historically, you know, the, the general fund takes in the tax revenue and transfers it to the highway fund, which transfers to the capital. The general mm -hmm. fund also transfers to the library and the cemetery. Historically, the way it's worked mechanically is those transfers were always made in full. So if there was a deficit in the general fund, Mm -hmm. The general fund took it on the chin, but if there was a surplus in the library fund, for example, yeah. the library did. I would argue that I don't intend to incur it to necessarily um, follow that practice going forward. If the library fund, which is in a surplus, looking like it's going to be in a surplus, doesn't need it, I think the general fund should retain it. The general fund can always give it later. Mm -hmm. As needed, but the general fund is. But when you say those trades were made like quarterly, you're not saying year end, you're saying like. Saying year end. Okay. Um, so the library fund, for example, you know, the, the budget called for $513,000 of property taxes. If the library only needs five hundred, dollars we should transfer five hundred, dollars and the thirteen should stay in the general fund. Mm -hmm. Yes, which I broadly understand. I'm, <coughs> yeah. It's all the same pot in the end, but in the general fund, I know. it gives you the most control. I, we've already been over Alessa's personal internal budgeting, where I feel really strongly about the $50 that is saving being transferred. So I guess I would adhere to practice, but defer to your expertise. So, her, thank you. Um, I also didn't mean to cut off the gravel if there's a next step no, um, with regard to Of course, I, uh, I'll uh, plan to follow up with you uh, and uh, see if we can uh, find a time to get up and take a look at your pit and then see what more can be done to, for the state to uh, start looking a little differently at the whole aggregate issue. And then my, my thought for next step was I was going to simply write a letter to Julie Moore, who's the head of ANR, and, and I think, as Chris said, copy in all the local, elect, all the local and state elected officials and mm -hmm. the neighboring towns. Mm -hmm. We're going to suffer the same fate and see we if there's put, any... We should put pressure on Tom and Teresa to do something. It's their community and... You know, it's something, you know, this is a, a critical issue. It's not something that's man handy. Yeah. I also have to say, whether it's statewide or not, it is a really challenging site Here. from a statewide perspective. I just have to say, I am all for making it a work. It is a wildlife corridor of statewide significance. And so, mm -hmm. by all means, write it to Julie Moore. I think it's really important the legislators here, and that's I don't want to diminish at all. They need to hear, exactly. we need solutions. This one being the poster child is really, really tough from my perspective, just in terms of, I think, like from the permanent. But maybe maybe it will go for anyway. I'm not saying don't do it. I just wish there was a, in a back corner somewhere, but the that's one, hypothetical. The, the one issue that will unite the whole state is gravel. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't need to belabor the issue, but, you know, if the a is turning their nose up at this from environmental aspects, they need to consider the fact that not only are they impacting the remaining resources by dispersing the towns that have been in the construction industry that have been benefiting from the Bolton pit for so many years, but now to haul from hell and back to get materials into these towns, it's going to impact our budgets, it's going to impact the roads, it's going to impact the environment, you're going to be dumping more carbon into the atmosphere with those longer hauls. There's many other issues that are going to impact the ANR, the Agency of Natural Resources, than simply opening quarries that were once there. So those pros and cons need to be brought to light uh, so that they recognize that it's not it's not just that clean cut. And I believe we heard last time that uh, there's a new fund uh, for the ANR is considering uh, expanding parking areas uh, for trailheads that are um, overused, <coughs> used beyond the capacity of the parking. Um, so that could be a consideration as well. But uh, we need to just, uh, I think, figure out exactly what our arguments are and uh, try to consolidate those into a letter and, and touch on the most uh, important uh, people in the, in the chain. 
Okay. Back to the budget. Uh, moving on to the library. Um, on the expense side, the library is looking uh, really good. Um, they've had a they've had a couple of agencies they've had to deal with, uh, but that's helped the budget side of things. And they've managed to get through it. So it looks like they're going to have a little surplus in the salary side, which is nice. And that gets to my earlier point about transferring the taxes there. Mm -hmm. um, no real point in transferring a surplus per se. Right. Um, and then cemeteries um, goes into that parks conversation. So we, we budgeted um, in the capital side of things, we budgeted for a, a little cemetery vehicle, if you will, a gator. Um, they asked about buying that, and I said, well, we're not even going to drive it yet, so let's hold off on buying mm -hmm. that. Same, same issue. Um, same issue. Um, so we'll, we'll hopefully fill that position at some point. Um, and then the grounds maintenance is historically we spent on contractors, and um, there we also bill public works time uh, for their seasonal people. So we'll, we'll spend that line for sure, but hopefully not go over much over and, and get through there. Um, did that contract go through the forty-four thousand? Yeah, and that's the only vendor to bid. We had a, a lot of folks who who said they'll do it, um, but they can't commit to doing it until they actually have the staff to do it. So almost so a, everything goes back to labor. So the answer was we'll bid on it when we have the staff. Um, so. You get through it. Um, cool. Municipal building operating fund. Um, what's not in here is we just processed a bill for eleven grand. Um, the heating system was kind of on the fritz for a good chunk of the winter, and it's the same system that cools. So, uh, you know, when it was seventy here last week, the library had their windows open because it was eighty in there, and I'm still cool, chilly on my side. So, we'll is it a heat pump? Yeah, it's a. It's a busted line in the system was the biggest part of it. Um, so the, the eleven thousand dollars is not a lot of labor; it's materials. Mm -hmm. um, and much of that budget is just the debt to to build this building in the first place. Um, so hopefully, the building maintenance side will be okay at the end of, at the end of the year. Uh, but the start of the year wasn't great. Mm -hmm. But overall, there's no. We're only a quarter in. There's no big red flags. But if there were, the way we control it would be to pretty tightly manage the capital side of things. Right. All right. Thanks for doing the analysis. <laughs> and then at a future meeting, I didn't have time for it tonight, and the event was busy. I'll do a review of the investment funds, just so people are up to speed on that. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the things you're still working with Bill on? investment stuff? I'm just not with Bill. Okay. Okay. Uh, update on the housing task force. The group met a long time ago in January as folks know. Um, I was checking my doodle to see how many people. I think we have six of nine on finding a regular meeting date and I will let you all know when it happens. Um, and there's also a really fun collaborative Google Doc on the website, so all the members of it have edit access. Actually, I'm happy to give it to the select board too, but if you like find a cool, I know we often like reply all with links, and so it's a running litany of every housing article you've seen in Vermont. Mm -hmm. I know I get some mail directly to me as well, um, just so knowing that that's a collaborative resource for the group. Um, I did include a note that short-term rental was going to be of interest. <coughs> I can read off the list of ideas the group brainstormed, if that's useful, Roger, but I didn't quite know what the subjective <coughs> um, Yeah, I think that the short-term rental is an issue of interest um, and uh, was wondering if, uh, you know, to what extent has that figured into the discussion on the... Uh, Yes, yeah, so we brainstormed first potential action <coughs> items. Um, there was interest in additional data, um, particularly including info on short-term rentals. Um, Mike, you were also at this meeting. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at a lot on zoning, which we've covered ad nauseum earlier today. Um, 
uh, impact on this is home size more than short term rental. So I would say it was mentioned. It wasn't. It was mentioned um, amid a constellation of many other things. I would say probably there's been considerable front porch forum and other dialogues mm -hmm. since. So I think it has certainly, at least in my view, escalated in importance and interest. Yes. Oh, the second other specific one is that there was. Um, a specific interest in hosting kind of some sort of like listening session potentially with this group and the planning commission. Municipalities have taken different approaches, but some like planning commissions essentially like <coughs> will put a regulation out that says we're banning all short term rentals to get a reaction. To be clear, I'm not proposing that. I don't think it's a good strategy, but the idea being many people don't react until there's something on the table. So there was a proposal about in this context, it was the Housing Task Force and Planning Commission, could also be the select board, but particularly with short term rentals, um, people might have seen Lamoil did a study, and like there's actually very divergent views. Some mm -hmm. people think it's phenomenal, some people say it helps pay my mortgage, um, some people say it's a tourist amenity, some people say it's destroying my neighborhood. And just knowing that those diversity of opinions exist, right. I think there was an interest in creating a platform to air them with maybe lower stakes than a regulatory yeah. proposal per se. Mm -hmm. Mike? Lisa, is there any update on uh, where Downstreet is with their... Sorry, not one that I have, but I was... Okay, I know. <laughs> it was their annual meeting tonight, which we missed because we I know, the BCA meeting. I would like to have been there. So the grant application, they came here? in right. front of you a little bit ago. Um, right. That was technically the town was the applicant, so that was submitted last week. Mm -hmm. um, they were in front of, um, I'm going to get the agency wrong, so I won't say it, but they were, they were uh, last week or this week, they're, they're giving their presentation to the state for their, um, for, tax, for a substantial amount of tax credits. Um, yeah. So a lot hinges on tax that. Tax credit interest. allocation. Yeah, but um, the, the plan, the hope is still to in construction into this year. Okay, so that, that hasn't changed. Then. Hasn't okay. changed. And my second question, and anyone feel free to jump in, I'm still a little bit concerned as to what what the status is of the proposed project up by Shootsville Hill. <coughs> well, that, yeah, that's that. pretty stalled, isn't it? Continued. Mm -hmm. the, the, challenge, the challenge we have is, and, and if, if I could go back and, and, and reset the rules, is that right. Anytime anyone comes to the DRB with a completed application by law, we're compelled to hold a hearing. Um, Act 250, water sewer permit issues aside, those are state permits. Um, and so the DRB held a legal hearing. Um, the, you know, I'm, not, I'm not speaking at a school here. The first right. couple of hearings, the, the documents were sketched. Is the, is the word they tend to use, and they were they were sketch documents. They weren't necessarily stamped by their engineers, um, and that's that's the process. They then can, can it's a challenging process. They're going to take their time to work through it, and, and you know you wish it had been a little less of a sketch review up front, and some of these issues were addressed. But just, we're just going to have to let the string play out. And so it's still flowing again. That's what I thought it was. I just wanted to Their last meeting took five minutes because they weren't prepared. Oh, and I then <clears throat> the DRB adjourned because the applicants, I don't know, I kind of felt embarrassed. I don't know why. Uh, but then they adjourned, and then they've asked for extensions ever since. So right. it looks like they're stalled out. My other question for Tom on housing more broadly was um, just about it's the capital bill, right, with this Stanley Wesson land transfer, and I've seen it made crossover, but is right. there anything else we should know? Um, right now. Uh, it didn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. So just, and this was, we passed that resolution essentially supporting this right. transfer for, did it include an amount? Okay. $400,000. But nothing's final in the Golden Dawn until it's final. Don't tell her everything that says with that. Anyway. Excuse me, Tom. Mm -hmm. Is that project up there on Shootsville, is that in the commercial zone? Oh, you're asking the wrong person. I it's believe it's in the root one. It's in the root one. <coughs> so does it fall under the 10-year threshold for Act 250? 
That doesn't apply to housing. We See? omitted that for Duncan McDougall. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, not for, sorry, well, sorry, he sorry, the but he, for the he was the impetus, sorry. <laughs> we omitted the one acre. But not we'll for we'll housing, we'll for commercial, no, for commercial, it's, it's, it's residential years. anyway. Um, sorry, it's, uh, so Waterbury has a 10 acre Act 250 jurisdiction for commercial development, and it's nine units for residential, I believe, so it's more than nine units. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is that project falling under the commercial purview? No, and, and, and the Act 250 board is going to crush them. Like, there's no way that's gone through. Well, I think they're going to try to come under Act 250. They're trying to avoid Act 250. Yeah. That's what they're doing. That's a good check. Before we move on, Roger, do you mind? Oh, sorry. Did you have something to say? I was just going to ask uh, if uh, you had any projected date for the next meeting. Uh, no, it's all in May. So it will be a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday between 6 and 8. Okay. That's one we could do. <laughs> all right. OK, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to, as we did last time, maybe take a minute before we head into executive session to look at items on the parking lot and things we've talked about. Just talk about pertinent or urgent things to put on um, the May 1 agenda. OK. I'm open to that. Go ahead. Um, I'm curious, do we know anything absolute already that'll be there and about like if it's a hefty time? It's not a hefty thing, but the, um, the emergency management plan mm -hmm. has to be approved. Okay. I know it was just approved late last year. Yeah. But technically, it's supposed to be by May 1st. Right. First. Okay. So. so, great. And, and I think what we ran into last time was that when we got here to approve it, we hadn't looked through it, so it got continued multiple meetings. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's on the website with you updates. You sent it by email. Right. Did you just send it to me? I think just sent it to you, Roger. <laughs> yeah, I'll send it. I don't think I saw it, but okay. So if that can be sent to us, you know, in preparation, knowing that the goal is to have the approval next meeting, so I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, the one online is. Can we address uh, <laughs> training, uh, emergency management trainings at the same time? So the only other thing on the agenda already <coughs> that I can recall is um, the library. They will oh, do an update mm -hmm. on what their strategic plan is. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of time that will take, but that's already on there. Okay. Just FYI. Okay. I'm brainstorming. Do we want the planning commission to come talk about the zoning? I don't want to. Yeah, it's on. Well, that's, I don't want to like force it on them because I know there's a lot happening in that world. So if someone in the commission doesn't have. I just feel like it's something we talked about extensively. Well, we can extend meeting. the invitation since yeah, we're well in advance of the agenda, which is why we're doing this. Um, Even if it's brief. And they have the Do you want to do the invite, mm -hmm. Melissa? Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, and it'll at least put a little pressure on us to get something moving. Well, and my question was to Tom Ray. We had the RFP for a consultant for the grant that we received for outreach. Yeah. And are they on board yet or no? Um, I'll probably sign the contract this week. Okay. Because the other, I guess maybe that would be part of the question to the planning commission to say there was interest in mm -hmm. hearing from them. We have time next meeting, mm -hmm. or also potentially, if it made sense right. in conjunction with them ramping up that outreach process. Do you want to make that invitation also, or should we have? If the board would like me to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank you. I am the liaison now. Exactly why That's I what I'll it. say. I'll say I'm your MIA liaison and I'm back and please come <laughs> chat with us. So on the next agenda you want an update from planning zoning rewrite. Am I understand? From the planning commission, but I'll confirm with you in case. Yeah, she's gonna see if that's the light works for them. Okay. Well that be Billy's first assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there too. <laughs> Um, and then is that when you want to do the investment fund review or you need more time for that? Um, I can do that in two weeks if desired, but there's some other stuff too. If there's more Shall important stuff, that's, mm -hmm. I don't think that's so time sensitive. What are some We're getting your book report, Mike. Let me just pull the charter book. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to do my research. Mike's Mike municipal book charter book report. I'd like a diagram. Mm -hmm. So in two weeks, I'll have a, um, a full proposal, some proposed timelines, dates for Marianne and doing some inclusive, inclusive oh, okay. Oh, where's that? 
And then it's if the agenda the is time. not too full, um, but in two weeks I should be ready with an employee handbook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Are you going to have the That's town crazy. attorney look at it before, or it's all, it's all, it's all, all been vetted out by them? Okay. Yeah. What a party! Okay. Right. Okay. What things are going to be judged okay. as a local municipal official and play him by? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and do you have any further update on the reappraisal? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yes. All my taxes. So the. There's a state bill to take it mm -hmm. out of our hands. That bill has a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So if that bill passes, there's two hundred thousand dollars of funds in our budget that are freed up. No wonder that bill. I like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no complaints so far. Yeah. What else you got? Plus the three hundred so of other of other unspent ARPA funds. Right. So we we'd have about five hundred thousand dollars to kick around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. For a second rascal for the cemetery that no one can drive. <laughs> is, is it going to be a problem getting a firm to do reappraisal? We all, we're talking about labor for well, every state's problem now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Dan Sweet has. Well, they have subcontract. Dan Sweet is working with Stowe's appraiser. Right. Doing theirs. Oh, yeah, so the, to next week. the team is in place. They would just come right here. Okay. Find a way to get it done. So I think we're surprisingly well positioned to get it done. Uh, I might eat my words. So appraiser decides not to come here. I don't trust anything in this environment. <clears throat> labor. Okay. Thanks. And the executive session. I hope to have something different there, but I can just give you all the briefing and do it and, and not use a name and just give it an open session. Okay. Sure. If it's possible, let's do it. So we, we went through the interview process for a planning and zoning director. Um, I think everyone crystallized around an excellent candidate. Um, his current compensation was more than what we had advertised at. Um, and so I had to exceed our budget a bit and, and our job I had to just to match what he made, and he didn't take it. Um, and I actually, at one point, um, thought I'd be coming to you and half apologizing because of how high I went to hire him. <laughs> um, but I actually offered him 100. And the answer was still no. Jesus. Rude. It wasn't the money, it was the job. <laughs> it wasn't the money, it was the job. So the, the last ad was, so we're, we're back to square one, if you will. The last ad was put out at 70 to 80 which I thought was really competitive based on our peers, um, but we didn't reach the finish line, so I re-advertised it today at 75 to 90. Oh, I didn't update the web then with that. I'll have to do that tomorrow. So hopefully, soon enough, we can have another candidate there and get moving. Do we feel confident about our plan for the interim? Yeah, okay. Neil's covering in the interim. He's really qualified. Um, Neil's, Neil's happy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So he, he could do anything now that the director? Yes. Uh, he's, got, he's got the legal authority to sign, to sign permits. Um, and he's staffing the planning commission meetings. Um, so, so he's all set. I mean, it can't go on indefinitely, but it's going to go on for a little while. And we've had conversations about that. So we're fortunate to have him. And uh, did you set a deadline for the applicants? Four weeks, but if someone applies tomorrow, we will shut it down early. We'll start interviewing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, May 17th. And this is one that we really moved really quickly. I mean, I, I, in the last three weeks, I've looked at some other towns and Several small, sleepy towns that previously had part-time people now are paying 80 grand for a full-time person. Mm -hmm. All they have is that one staff person. But um, markets, markets move, um, and I think part of the challenge is is that if you, you know, if you work here, you're on the front lines, and there's some public criticism that can come with that. If you work for Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, 
I'm just going to throw this out there. It's a way long time from now, but I am going back to Europe in August. Good for you. So I'm going to be going to two meetings. Two meetings? Well, let's skip that one. You want to skip that one? That's fine. Yeah, it's a summer yeah. meeting. Yeah. This is a summer meeting. wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. yeah, just the way a travel plans worked, it's two Mondays. So. In the charter, we can recall you for that kind of thing. I'll just stay in Europe then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, both uh, meeting dates and uh, yeah, that are scheduled in August, uh, you will, we would not be able to. That's correct. Unless it will be on uh, last minute. Potentially reschedule. At least one of them. On the community bulletin board, I'd like to commend. I don't know if it was your last meeting because I wasn't in the building, but I love that it was just it happened. We talked about it. It happened, and it's helpful. And we do only got but uh, yeah, yeah, that was a great solution to get yeah. those things up there. And, Forty bucks. Wow, what a great investment! Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we may have even more than that. Or what? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Do you want to just say better connections for public info? Yeah, I would build ID for better connections. Do you want to just give the update uh, so that everyone has it? Yes, don't. the better connections grant that Steve applied for is available through the Public Works Board. Thank you. 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 Which I only found out because another town calls to get it. Um, and so I was like, or the water break. Which they're never happy about, but with, with a vacant position right now, it's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But uh, and uh, RW is going to move forward with focusing on uh, the Waterbury Center with their activities. So that, that will move forward. Okay. All right. Last but not least, you fight on vote May 10th. Yep. Uh, yes. Yay. 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 What was going on with that bus? Do you know anything about that busted pipe on Howard? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I got a text from Bill Woodruff. Uh, I think it was Tuesday night. It might have been Wednesday night. I think it was Tuesday night. And he said, uh, he, he said, he said, no worries, just yet, but we're losing two thousand gallons a minute. We can't find where it's coming from. <laughs> oh, so, so it was like I, midnight. I was hearing yeah, about there was so, a jackhammer, and I was like, yeah. I, I get my calculator. I'm like, oh, that's three million gallons a day. That's kind of reason to worry. So they, yeah. the challenge was it was far off the road. So mm -hmm. just driving the road, walking with flashlights, they couldn't easily see it. So it took a while to find. find. And then they they've got to shut the valves and get it shut down. Uh, in the meantime, we lost a lot of water, as you can imagine. Um, and then it was so far off the road we couldn't get to it with our excavator. So they so Woody called the contractor and said, "Oh yeah, a tiny little project, no big deal. You'll be in and out in an hour." So the guy said, oh, "I'll rejigger a few things and I'll come." And then he came here and you know he was here all day, of course, because Woody mm -hmm. did a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. got the job done. Mm -hmm. um, so it was over and done with in a day. But those uh, we had four staff who worked basically 24 hours straight during that process, and a big part of it is just chasing it down. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you worry in the interim. They they were able to isolate it. Um, the challenge is the valves. You try to exercise the valves regularly, but they don't always turn. Right. Uh, so they they. Um, it wasn't too bad, but about 30 houses were without water, you know, for a day, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then our system is is in much better shape than a lot of older cities, especially. So in those cities, the valves half the time don't turn, so you don't you don't have 30 people impacted. You have 300 if you're lucky. Um, and then just because the pipes are older, you know, if, you, if you've seen old water main. Um, it's got you know stalactites in it, basically, from all the 
hold up, you know, minerals over the years. Uh, so all that stuff gets really badly stirred up. So in our system, that wasn't too bad. Uh, but in a lot of towns, you get a big water break like this, and then everyone breaks about dirty water for the next three days. Um, you got to deal with all that fallout. So system's in pretty good shape, um, which is really why we want to do this line because it's it's a seventy year old line. Mm -hmm. um, and if you you know if your staff have to regularly chase down these things and work twenty four hour shifts, you might be your staff for much longer. So it's not just about the money; it's about and and to me, it's for the residents. It's a quality of life issue if you don't keep your system modern. I mean, Mount Pelier, if you read the. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a constant feature, and you know, at some point you're like, all right, I'm paying, you know, 300 bucks a quarter. The beauty of municipal water and sewer is that usually if something's wrong, it's, it's not your problem. Right. But it shouldn't be wrong very often. Right. right. So, but the people in the village, I don't think, had any idea anything ever happened. No, the only reason is like, why? It was, <laughs> it, it, it was, it was, it was 100 feet well. from my house. Yeah. My water still worked, I and all I could see was well. the flashing lights and hear the sound of like. So you were just not in that section? No. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what are they doing out there? Did you have a boil? You did put a boil notice order in. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. we well, get a motion to adjourn? So moved. On time. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.